All right, guys, I think we're going live here. It's finally, I cannot believe it. The time has arrived, my friends. Listen, I never thought this time would come as well. Months ago, big scandal happened in poker with with uh, with our man here, Bryn Kenny, today. And uh, and listen, now my other audio is kind of coming on here. I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to find my audio here. But basically, right, something big happened with Bryn, and uh, he got himself into a big issue. Martin Zamani. Uh, back and forth. Sorry, I got some. I got. I got bad feedback here, guys. Hold on. Listen, this is what happens, Brent. I took a. I took a little break. I come back, and now I can hear myself talk. Hold on a second here, guys. Let me roll back into that intro. Hold on a second. I'm listening to myself talk here. Hold on a second, guys. You guys can probably hear the feedback out there. You see that, Brent? Yep. I told you. I said. I said. I said. I feel like something's gonna come up here, but I gotta find out where this is coming from. Hold on a second. This is the advantage of working with the with the team is that when you work with a team of people, then you can kind of ensure this kind of stuff don't happen with the production errors. So, but yeah, let me just go out there. Hold on a second, guys. This is the advantage of working with the. I can kind of hear myself. Can you? I guess you guys can out there can probably hear it back. But let me just kind of find this real quick. Hold on a second. Techno era. Brent, we can still chat a little bit back and forth. How, how are you doing out there before we get officially into it? Doing great, brother. Yeah. Excited. Happy, to, happy to get on here. Have a good chat with you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Brent, we can still chat a little bit life, back and forth. Life is good. Life is good, yeah. I'm trying to just find, basically, like, on your screen, I just have so many tabs. Do you guys, any of you guys ever have, like, 100? I basically have 5,000 tabs open of my of my program. So basically it's hard to figure out what's playing the damn thing. <laughs> ay, 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 puppy. Ay, ay, ay. Hold on a second. Of my program. So basically it's hard to figure out what's playing the damn thing. <laughs> Whatever. We might, we might, we might just have to go without it here, I guess. Ay, ay, ay. Hold on a second. Let me close all this out. Hold on a second. We might have to go with, we might got to go with no chat here, Bryn. Usually I talk to the chat, but I might just need to close it all down. You could try to pop it up at the end too. Yeah. I just got to make sure the audio shut off. Sorry about that, guys. We might got to go with no chat here, Bryn. Usually I talk to the chat, but I might just need to close it all down. All right. Let's see if this works. Test, test, test. Test, test. Oh, I think it might be on your end. Is it on your end? No fucking way. No, I don't think so. I think it's on your end. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Well, it's definitely not on your end. <laughs> what a mistake. Let me see. Uh, all right. Perfect. Please work. All right. Test, test, test. We're good? All right, we're good. You ready? Ready. All right, cool. Sorry about that, guys. Little technical difficulties. We're here. We're live. Poker Live podcast. Joey Grimoine, aka Chicago Joey. Can't hear any of my echo right now, and I'll pull the comments up a little bit. Obviously, it's been a long time coming. Bryn Kenny, big in the scandal. The guy brought me out of retirement. I was living a peaceful fucking life in the mountains, and I was working on crypto, working on different things, figuring out what else life had to offer. This Bryn Kenny story pops off. Doug Polk pops up with the suit coat on, with the pen in his hand with Martin Zamani. Martin Zamani looks like he's coming from the undisclosed location, hitting the vape pen, spilling out a story of poker cheating, widespread cheating, occult, all this kind of accusations against Bryn Kenny. Bryn Kenny goes on the podcast with Sarah Herring, does an interview with Sarah Herring. The community's not happy about it. They want to get some better questions. They want to get some better answers. They want the tough questions answered or asked and answered by Bryn. And uh, so I said, you know what? I'm gonna consume myself back into whatever the hell is going on here with this situation. I'm gonna lock in. I've been focused on this for the past few months, Bryn, and I gotta say, uh, it's great to have you on. I appreciate you coming on. It takes a lot of courage. I think a lot of people out there wouldn't wouldn't expect you to come on and 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 ask ask answer questions from me. So I mean, I'm pretty surprised you'd actually do it. Yeah, for sure. And you know, a lot of people, you know, think that kind of I was hiding from answering questions, but 
you know, you saw, you got messages from me as early as June, you know, me wanting to come out and have a good conversation about things because, yeah, you know, the poker community is, you know, it's been my life. Like poker has mm -hmm. been my life. I love the game and, you know, uh, yeah, want to have, you know, some, a good banter and, you know, give, give the people maybe some solace in, 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 in questions that they might have a certain understanding about and, you know, let people see a different perspective and maybe, you know, come to their own conclusion about things. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely gonna talk about that, Rex. A lot of people out there said, hey, why are you gonna give this guy a platform to come on there when we did hear him answer some questions with Sarah Herring? And in a lot of people's opinions, they don't believe anything you gotta say. And they said, why would you give this guy a platform to come on here and share a viewpoint or an opinion that pe some people have already decided that that opinion against you is accurate. Some people have decided you're guilty, that everything that this guy said about you is true. And they you thought you used to be the guy people looked up to in the community. And now a lot of people are saying, you know, what the fuck is this guy's problem? And why did this guy do this? So when you're in the situation you're in, I mean, what is this? What has this felt like for you for the past few months? Um, you know, it's been interesting for sure, especially since, um, you know, when this first happened, actually, I, I was working really hard on my project, on myself. I felt like I'd put so much time and energy into things where finally I was going to have this, you know, two, three weeks where I could take a breather and, you know, not think about anything and go on a vacation and you know, sometimes life doesn't give you what you imagine. And mm -hmm. it's interesting because I've kind of, I, I'd say everything comes in like different levels, like along the journey. So, you know, me being talked negatively about isn't something new to me, but it being on the internet with like a wide stream audience has been something new to me. So just to, you know, to deal with that, to manage it with even the people that are close to you who are potentially very affected by the situation. So, you know, I feel like everything in life is, you know, a test. Uh, it, it's, it's a new experience where you could take something from it as opposed to look at it in a negative way. And I just, I feel like and hope that from the beginning of this to today, you know, it's it's helped me to grow and see a lot, see maybe some blind spots that I wasn't necessarily noticing at that point. So basically what you're saying is that you can make a positive about anything and no matter what happens or what comes up in your way or what decisions that you make, the past in some ways doesn't matter. And it's only about what you do in the present and the future moving forward that it sounds like that's sort of how, how you think about this or how you're focusing on this or how you're maybe approaching this. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there are some things that, you know, some heinous acts that you might not, maybe you can say that some things, you know, people can't come back from or so. But I think as a society, as a whole, we shun people too much when they make mistakes and then they're going to be so hesitant to make another decision. So they're just going to follow the crowd. I think the best that we can do is when we see someone making a mistake, isn't to laugh at them or to ostracize them, but maybe to give them a different viewpoint so that you can help them make better decisions in the future and not to scare them into hiding. You're basically saying like some type of reform that the way that people are treat people who are accused of a different kind of acts. I mean, some acts, right? They say if you murder somebody, you kill somebody, then people are going to view you and treat you a certain kind of way. And society has agreed that that's normalized. What you're saying is that some mistakes you feel like people are too harsh on. But I also at the same time, I feel like as time goes on and especially if people take accountability for the mistakes that they make. But I think in this situation, the deal with you and with Martin is a lot of people feel like you went on this podcast with Sarah Herring and you didn't take accountability for anything because you basically went on there and said every part of what this dude said is, is not true. The guy talked for an hour and 20 minutes in the Doug Polk podcast about a number of different topics we're, which we're going to get into. So when I see this guy, I mean, listen, I don't know this guy's story, right? The guy came on the podcast. I watched it many times. He said that he felt backed into a corner. A lot of poker players do at this point in time, man. They're trying to hang on, they're trying to survive, they're trying to find the next fucking investor who's gonna put them into the event. And it sounds like you, from what you've talked about, you've got the investing addiction and it kind of sounds like you might be a bad investor in some ways when you're giving deals to guys who are busto, who basically like have to take the investment that you're all right? I mean, that ain't the best investment that typically the guy you wanna go for, right? For my opinion and in my 
short time in the lab, really focusing on investing, that ain't the guy, the founder I'm going for, right? So in this situation with the Martin Zamani guy, you have a relationship with this guy for a long time. He goes on this podcast. He says a lot of shit about what he alleges, about what you're up to. You go on the podcast and you say, none of it is true. And I think a lot of people out there who may have have an idea about you or have heard things about you over the years in the community, who've come out publicly and, and talked about some things in the past, maybe some ethic, ethical, uh, whatever you want to call them, right? On your end with people that I saw on poker Twitter, just looking around shortly with Josh Arie, Kevin McAfee, then I think it leads people to believe that you're just not being truthful with them and you're not taking accountability for any mistake that might have happened in this situation with your involvement with GG Poker or with your involvement with Martin Zamani or your horses in this situation or with cheating the community in this situation as well. Uh, well, I don't really think that I said none of it was true because I got I, I admitted to, you know, that ghosting happened in the past. Uh, I said that no version of, you know, collusion, RTA that had any truth to it at all. Uh, I also said, you know, that some of those stories, you know, uh, let's call it uh, with shamans involved or anything, these were things that were recommended to people and not, you know. I, I well, what, what does that mean? I mean, you, you understand what the guy said. The guy Martin Zamani come on his show, right? He says, Bryn calls me directly, says, I need to get my energy checked out and I got to go to the shaman. The shaman goes there. Shaman's talking about being a warlord. The shaman's trying to put fog poison into... He, and he says other horses are doing this kind of thing. So to me, it didn't sound like he had the op. I mean, maybe you felt like you gave him the option. You obviously, as the investor and the investee relationship is a very unique relationship because oftentimes the person who's getting money is weird about handling money, handling authority, handling power, handling people who have those control over their life. So in that situation, if you're like, hey, go to the shaman, they might think, oh, this guy fucking ain't gonna stake me if I don't go to the shaman, I gotta pay my rent next month, I better go to the shaman. So well, you know, one, one other thing is, you know, I've staked hundreds of people in my career and there's only been one person that's ever done that combo with me who I've staked. So, you know, there you can bring in countless other people that I've staked, never pushed anything onto them in that way. You know, maybe that is the way that he felt that it was pushed onto him. But these were recommendations that I give to people. It wasn't, you know, you do this or, you know, I'm not going to back you anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, it could. I would say that there have been times like along my journey where I've, I'm an intense person, let's say, and I'm very intensely focused on growth myself. So I'm sure that there were times when the people close to me felt like if they weren't growing themselves also, then they wouldn't be able to keep up with me or I wouldn't keep them around me. And even in the in those times, you know, I have said things like, you know, if this person isn't interested, if people aren't interested in growth, like I have no interest in doing business with them. And, you know, I think it was a, a harsh line that I took in that regard, but definitely in no way have I ever forced or, or told anyone that they had to eat a certain way, that they had to do a particular set of drugs or they had to do anything. And also when we come down to, you know, let's talk about the frog poison a little bit. You know, this is a, a sacred act that's been happening for hundreds, if not thousands of years by, you know, in a spiritual indigenous type of way that a lot of people truly believe that this is something that helps you. So have I done, I tried that myself. Uh, and I thought it was something good. And I made, I've made recommendations to people that I speak to of the things that I do personally myself. It's not like I'm telling people, hey, you know, you should go do this where it's something that I never tried. It's like, hey, this worked for me. You know, maybe it would work for you. Yeah, I mean, you can understand how the shaman idea to you might seem like a normal thing, but to, obviously to most of society, they think it's fucking weird that your boss or your investor giving you money is going to say, hey, go to the shaman and the shaman's going to, they're going to put frog poison in you, right? Or the shaman's going to tell that they're a warlord well, or I mean, deal that, with that a, kind of energy. A, that's, a, that's a very like, you know, fabricated story because in the end, I'm, I'm not telling anyone that they should give anyone any type of medicine. It's more like, hey, you know, I have this person here that happens to live in the same city as you. If you want to, if you want to meet them and, you know, see if they offer something that you might be interested in, that's then two consenting adults making a decision where I'm re referring someone to someone who's a, you know, well-respected shaman who was recommended to me by someone who I respect a lot in that same type of spiritual community.
Okay, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's like I said, I know a lot of people are into spirituality, into the shaman, into ayahuasca, the DMT, you know, a lot of, it's becoming more of a mainstreamish kind of thing. And, and there are more podcasts and content that are talking about people that consume these kind of activities and the potential upside, the benefits in terms of an energetic level or a frequency level, depending on what the people believe in. So people don't believe in that at all. So people really believe in that kind of stuff. So you're not running it says you you also said you invested in, in a lot of people so are, it's not like is it a pre it's not a prerequisite to have to send people to do these activities you mentioned a psychic you mentioned having to do yoga or he can't play certain stakes certain days if you did yoga that day you play the the 500s if you didn't do yoga maybe you're relegated to the lower stakes game and kind of fucking with people in that way so as things i mean if things like that go on it makes sense i, I i've heard of businesses maybe do things like that before you know a sports team, you know, but I, we ain't I, heard I, of a poker I, team do something like that before. I mean, I've staked hundreds of guys, and like I truthfully tell you, you know, there's one other person who I've ever staked who's ever done comp this frog poison combo with me in my life. So, and there were also people who I staked that were on that same trip. So those people weren't pressured even to take it while they were even there while it was going on. And I feel, you know, it really it's been something for me. I don't want to pressure anyone to do anything. I do have an intense personality where, you know, I'm very, I get very excited very easily about trying new things, doing new things. I get very hyped up. And, you know, like you said, it can be in someone else's mind too, where they think that they have to do these things if they want to, you know, survive by being one of your horses and being right. part of, this stable, but you know, I, I've had look, I've had tons of horses who you know have ate terrible diets, have done nothing of any type of yoga or exercise or anything, and you know I've staked for years long and never even mentioned these things. But when you have you know everything, I would say is case by case. If you're in business with someone, so you're evaluating each person differently. Their their poker game, their positivity the work that they're putting on into their game how are they realistic about the skill level that they have so it's very easy for someone to sit back and take a viewpoint in their mind oh if i don't do this you know thing i'm going to be dropped in stakes whereas you know there could also be information where that person was three-handed in a big 10k on gg and dusted off 50 blinds with do seven off mm -hmm. in like a, in the biggest spot that they were in where you know, when you see something like that and someone makes a, a atrocious play, like by your account, in the biggest spot that they have in their career, you have to second guess, should that person be playing those stakes, actually? Absolutely and, not. I mean, what are, you, what are we talking about here, right? If a fucking guy is going to be that big of a donk, then of course the guy shouldn't stake the guy. I mean, right? This is one way to think about it, right? Obviously, you see a guy make a play like that, that's a that's a... To me, right? Uh, you know, what the fuck is this guy doing, right? That guy I mean, obviously go. You think they're just like you know burning your money and don't really care about it anyway. So on that same trip, you know, where I was recommending that he do some, that he do some yoga, that he go to the beach, that he eat some healthy food. You know, looking on the other side, you've got you know someone just lighting your money on fire. Right. So you you can clear you can take multiple approaches in this line. You can that and you can decide like okay i don't want to do business with the person anymore because they're not taking it serious enough for me you can say okay well you know i think that the person playing too high stakes like out of their league or you know you you have multiple things like you can do and i've always been the person that has really tried to help people as much as i can and to recommend them to pay for these things you know the to have a yoga teacher, a masseuse show up at your house that you don't have to pay for in Vegas, you know, who's like one of the best or to have these tr trips or things paid for for you. You know, I really, I feel like I put a lot of time and effort into people's growth as a person and as a poker player. And as the times got on and I, I went broke multiple times staking people like the whole downswing of my entire career from going from millionaire to broke or negative millionaire. It wasn't me losing the money myself. It was me staking too many people in games that they shouldn't have been playing when they have mindsets that they weren't winners at the time. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning of me being a, you know, let's say 19 year old kid and staking people super carelessly and just throw money at it. Even if I didn't cut staking at, at the time, of course, 
in those next le levels of staking, as you go through that journey, you're going to get sharper and sharper of the people that you want to be staking, the stakes that they should be playing, the people that you want to surround yourself with. And I think that, you know, if, if you, at that time I was looking at, and maybe it was a bit extreme at the time, but if someone wasn't interested in, you know, growth of their poker game, of themselves as a person, then, you know, why should I put all of this effort that I was? And, you know, with someone like Martin, he was very troubled. Like there were countless occurrences where- well, let me let me, just, let me just kind of specify that, right? Because I know a lot of people, they, they you know, watching the Sarah podcast, they say a lot of long answers in some situations, right? So just kind of to summarize what you say, just to make sure I understand what you're saying correctly, is that you think that you're assisting in people's evolution of life and you're giving them value by insisting that they go to the shaman, that they do yoga, that they eat a better diet, that they take care of their body, their mind, their soul, and that that manifests itself in better poker results at the table. And because you believe that's the way that you have success in this industry and that's the way you have had success with yourself, you feel like influencing other people to do that, whether they're people you have a business relationship, whether they're people in your personal life, you feel like that's something that you enjoy doing. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I can understand how that would make a lot of people feel uncomfortable as well, because uh, the money relationship with people really fucks with people so hard. So if you're investing in uh, thousands of people and uh, if you're being ruthless about it, if, and which we're gonna get into a lot of stuff that happened on GG Poker, the cheating allegations, the affiliate stuff, and kind of just your experience with GG Poker, which I'm really excited to talk about. So it sounds like you have a pretty powerful position at, with this company at the time as someone who is really has the, the direct contact to the people who run the company and you're a master agent affiliate of the game. You're setting these games up. You're bringing in players. You know the people that are playing the games. You help to build up the high stakes ecosystem on GG Poker. You can understand that a guy who got no money or little money feels like they got no shot. Oh my God, I found something. I got to fucking hang on to this. Then you can understand that that power dynamic is very uncomfortable for a lot of people like that. And uh, they, when they, when these things are forced on them, they can obviously take a wrong turn because how else do you explain that Martin Zamani is on Doug Polk's podcast in the undisclosed location with the vape pen fucking saying all these things about you when you feel like all you were doing was trying to give this guy the tools to put himself in a position to succeed. And you gave this guy capital, you invested in his business, you tried to give him a chance to make money. And at every point you saw when you're trying to work with him, you felt like he was just doing the opposite of kind of what you said. So what how how does it get to a point where this guy is here and uh, what what like what happened with you guys well you know it's hard to get to get into someone's head and say like the reason why they did something here you know um he could have he could have felt like you're saying in some ways that they were you know things that were enforced as opposed to things that were recommended you know, you're t you're talking about also a trouble a troubled person. Who... Well, you keep you keep you keep saying trouble. Like, what does that mean? I mean, a lot of people got issues. A lot of people got trouble. Like, what? what how are you? How are you? Decide like the guy to me it seemed like a guy been playing poker a long time, had some poker success, had ups and downs, maybe a little bit of a degenerate, maybe likes to get out of line a little bit. In terms of that guy being troubled, maybe he troubled from a business standpoint because he might not be able to manage his money properly. But in terms of uh, uh, trouble outside, right? You know what I mean? Like that, that it feels like you're, you're just putting him down in that situation. Talk about it in like the last two times. That's when you stopped it for the other thing, you know, Easy, troubled nice. instances where, you know, he's yelling at other players like on the rail while Scott Margerson's deep in the Aussie Millions main event. And he's making a scene like embarrassing himself, yelling at the guy, uh, also hearing like, being super rude to just random like uh, staff at different places. The guy also told me that he's never been happy in his life. So, you know, that I would say when someone tells you that they've never felt happy in their entire life, like that's one of the most troubled people like at least, that I've ever heard. You know, that's like that's a really sad thing to hear from someone, you know, when they open up to you one on one and say that they've never felt happy. So I feel like I continue. I gave him a bit more rope because, you know, I'm someone who's been fortunate, I feel like, to have, you know, support on my side, to have love from my family. And, you know, to only imagine someone ever, like really feeling to the point where they've never actually felt happiness, like that actually, that makes me very sad. And I would love to, you know, put, put some time and energy and assistance into trying to, 
you know, help that person shift into a happier state of being. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying, right? So you say you met this guy. I mean, this kind of happens when you meet, sometimes guys meet girls and, and the girl in a bad state, she got a bad family on the outs with her parents, maybe doesn't know what she's gonna do with her job. And, and in that situation, you as a guy, you meet her, you got, you got a place to live or you got a job, you guys start hanging out. And uh, you know, you feel like you're trying to help her out. I'm trying to teach her business. I'm trying to teach her investing. I'm trying to teach her these things. Really, realistically, some people don't want, don't, they don't want to learn those things. That's what I, this is what I learned, right? Me trying to help these people out. Not everybody necessarily wants my help. It sounds like in this situation, Martin Zamani didn't really want your help. He just wanted you to fucking invest in his poker tournaments and he didn't give a fuck about what else you really maybe had to say it for whatever reason. That's what it seemed like. But I guess then it gets into this other stuff, which the other stuff about Lauren Roberts and about GG Poker. And I guess just so, so I understand when I'm researching, what is your experience with GG Poker? Because when GG Poker, you, you initially put me in touch with someone who represented GG Poker years ago about me working on their PLO ecosystem. And in retrospect, you know what? Maybe I should have joined a upcoming online poker site, but at the time they got no rake for their pot in Omaha. And I said, there's no way I can ever send anybody to go get uncapped rake on your PLO games. That would be absurd to ever represent that. But I know that you worked with these guys, but I don't understand the capacity that led you to being the leader of the of, of setting up games and being one of the, the top agents for GG Poker. Okay, so uh, I think it was March of 2017 when I first met like uh, the owner and a few of the top guys in GG Poker. And I was actually interested in opening a of opening a skin on their network. So a friend of mine, Kitty Quo, like uh, set up the meeting there. I flew from, uh, I must've been at, at a Triton tournament somewhere, maybe in Macau at the time or the Philippines. So after that, I flew over to South Korea, had this meeting and it, uh, they started getting into how, you know, to have a skin, you need to have a license, you need to have pay, you, you need to handle payments, you need to handle support. So I kind of left that meeting not really interested in going forward with that. But uh, I had some dinner, some drinks in the last, in the next few nights. And GG Poker's plan actually at that time was to go after uh, someone like Johnny Chan was uh, what their thinking was to be the face of the site. And uh, after having a dinner uh, with some of the guys on the team, they decided a little bit after that, that they wanted to make me an offer to be the face of the site. So they, they just, I guess from what I had to say, they pivoted from the direction that they were going in, into, the, into offering me to be that face of GG Poker. Uh, I can remember in, the, in that same trip, they were actually talking how they had plans to get rid of the desktop client and had no interest to run tournaments at all. So actually, uh, not only did I, I, con I convinced them, uh, if you want to have a real poker site, you need to have a desktop so that people can play multi tables. You know, people aren't playing on their iPad like in Sunday grinds and people have other sites to play also. So if you don't make it easy and accessible for people to play your site alongside other sites, you're not really going to have something that can grow to the size of what it, it's grown today. While at the same time, um, in at that time, GG's biggest uh, tournament was a $500 buy-in with a 10K guarantee. Uh, I kind I sold them that tournaments were you know the most important marketing tool that you have. That if you can run big tournament series with big guarantees, especially piggybacking on when poker stars or party poker would have a series. So the, the plan from the beginning was if party poker or poker stars have a series, we're gonna have one too. And you know we'll make the games kind of semi-compatible to what's going on. So our first series happened in November that year. I would say that uh, mostly I built that the guarantees, the series, the satellites for them. And we ran a 50 million guarantee series in November of that year, which did super well. Most of the tournaments crushed the guarantees. I think there was a total of about 150,000 overlay or so across the entire series of 50 million guarantees. So that was a success. So things kind of grew in from that. And, you know, what I was doing. Um... Well, okay. So I just want to, once again, right, I just want to recap, right? So basically what you're saying is you met with GG Poker. They were trying to build their site. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. In some ways you came in, gave them an idea about how to scale their business that ended up working out for them. In your opinion, you think that it worked out for them. And then that basically that led you to a bigger role with the company. You started to get more involved with the company. And as you started to potentially 
be able to actually deliver results, whether they wanted people on the site, whether they wanted to make money for the site. And then this allowed you to scale up your involvement with GG Poker to the point of having that type of influence where you now are able to create or help create big prize pool guarantees, but also help facilitate people being able to play in these high stakes games that were taking place on the site at the time. Yeah, to sign people up for the site, uh, of course, because if you're gonna run guarantees, just like you said, I showed that I was able to you know, build a, a model for them and deliver on it also. And to do that, you need, I, I was working around the clock at that time, whereas I was signing up, I, I wrote every single person that I knew, I was looking so at- So how, how does that, how does that work? I don't know, how does that, so what, is it, what does that mean? You just sign like, I, so I can sign, like I, if I could sign people up for a poker site, then I'd be a very wealthy man because I got, I got a bunch of followers that are ready to play some poker. So I don't understand, how are you signing people up for the site? Like what, I don't understand what that means. Like, what does that mean? Well, I'm like messaging the person and telling him that these games are running and that, you know, that this is something that they might be interested in playing. Right. So basically you're like the host of, of the high stakes games on, on GG poker. Yes. So what does that, what does that entail? Does that entail? Cause most times hosts are also facilitating the money on the site. And a lot of times they're taking credit, they're vouching for people. They're, you know, it's pretty normal things in the game. They're setting up the games. They're staking players in the games. They're taking pieces of the games. They're getting all sorts of commission from running those games. That's what I'm talking with casinos. Now these are kind of partnership offers that they give me. So it makes a lot more sense to what companies are offering. It sounds like you had something like that. Was that correct? You know, like an agent affiliate type of deal where the people that you sign up are part of that agency affiliate and you would, yeah, you would help facilitate money transfers from them to other people. You know, they might want to trade X amount of you know, crypto to buy a GG and then finding people who are winning and losing consistently like on the site to be able to buy and sell. So you're you're writing people to start games because if the game doesn't start, then, you know, it can never hit the guarantee and you can never scale. So you need to, of course, I stake people at the times like uh, to start games, to, you know, to help facilitate that growth. Like you said, I've given out lots of credit to people also, which is, you know, pretty clear with like the, the the Lauren stuff. And I've given lots of credit to a lot of people, whereas, you know, along the same lines in those beginning days, you know, I, I, I've never ran, I, the last game that I ran, I was 15 or 16 years old in high school that was, you know, at, at a friend's uh, house on Friday and Saturday night and we were playing one, two, no limit. After that, I was only a poker player, but, in that time between be, while I was a poker player, I had, you know, made recommendations to poker stars about games that they should run in the live setting and the online setting. I'm the one that ha had those one day high roller tournaments actually added in the beginning. So I've always been really interested in growing the game. And in this time when GG started to boom a bit, the game offering online was kind of on a decline and the thought of the game was on the decline. Right, so I in agree. my mind, it was my way to offer people, well, it was my way to offer people, you know, an outlet to play games that they want to play in. And well, I agree. I mean, this is, this is the Phil Nagy American hero defense is that Phil Nagy is running ACR poker. He ran it from the Costa Rica uh, headquarters. He out there in Cyprus poker, but spending, hundreds of thousand dollars on tournament buy-ins right now enjoying himself having a great life. Well, how do you have this great life is because he been running the game that's in Costa Rica where call himself America's Carter and let the American poker players go sign up there, right? So it sounds like you had a great setup, right? You're making, we all know in poker, the way to make the money is to put the game on. And if you're an online operator and you're raking every pot and you got an uncapped rake system and you got a good deal, you're either running the game or you're right there earning from that game it sounds to me like you had basically a God mode set up in this situation that a lot of people would would maybe want to have as well. Well, yeah, definitely. And but, you know, it, it was starting on a new platform like no one was really playing on the site, like, especially tournaments. No one was playing on the site. So, you know, it's not like I came into something that was already running and then was just given something. I mean, I, I was working all day, every day to, to get people to play these games, to look at the games that run, how does the guarantee do, what can we run at this time? Like I was effectively their poker room manager and making decisions of what games we were gonna run at what times, 
with what guarantees, how is the satellite schedule going to work going into it? So, I mean, I had a definitely a fortunate scenario where I got to, you know, entrench myself into this and help from the bottom of something that no one was playing on to build it, to help it build into what it is today, a competitor of biggest poker site in the world. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that because, I mean, a lot of people in the chat, they, they are not really following too much poker. I mean, I follow poker every day since I was 21 years old. So I'm pretty locked in into what the fuck is going on out there in the world. I talk with all the companies. I know all the people. I try to stay locked in. I really don't necessarily work with a lot of these companies because, you know, who knows what's going on out there, right? That's how I've always looked at this. And I'm not naive anymore. I done done a lot of these investigations. I done talk with people and heard things that I never even knew, imagined. I mean, it's a big reason why I took a step back from poker and said, I'm, you know, should I even invest any more of my brain power into being good at the great game of pot in Omaha when... I see behind the curtain and now I know what's going on out here or what could go on out here, how easy it is to go out here or how the relationship really is working with people. And then this fucking story with you comes out and I'm like, this is what I've been saying is going on, man. This is what I've been saying is happening. I, cause, because you see this happening, you hear this happening. I know a lot of things about a lot of players over the course of the years, allegedly some whispers, this and that, everybody hears this kind of stuff inside the poker world. So it sounds like to me in this situation, right, you got this setup where you're putting on the games, you're bringing the players, you got to deal with the site. And you mentioned that you're staking players in the game and that you stake thousands of players. Well, this is where the idea of the stable comes into play because if you are telling these guys to work together and to play different accounts, to ghost each other, you know, Martin, you ain't feeling good, let the ghost in now, call the closer, Mariana Rivera, right? Shout out to Chip Leader Coach, shout out to Chance, shout out to Fox in. If you call in the closer, right, of course, that's we we can agree that that's very advantageous to get out the guy you think's not good and call in the guy that's great. And it sounds what Martin is alleges is that you were basically running a mastermind here where you were in charge of the entire operation. You got paid from all directions. You're getting paid from the players. You're getting paid from the game itself. You're basically printing millions of dollars in this situation that you have with bringing all these people in and because as you said, right, your goal was to help build GG Poker up, to help them become a competitor in the market against poker stars, which I would agree with you that you helped do when you, because obviously the games were popping off. Everyone was like, where the fuck are these guys getting money from? How are they getting in the game? Like, why is Luce Leon in the game? Why, where are these guys coming from? Where are these games coming from? It didn't really make much sense. Nothing was going on. So I would agree that you were a big part of how that was going on. Now, I think we all want to find out is what exactly was going on when these kind of things were going on because during this time is when we saw people like Ali, Jake, and Sam. These guys ran into a big situation. They're getting banned on there. RTA, multi-account, go. I don't know exactly what the what the brevity of, of the allegations are against them. It seems like these allegations have been confirmed by other people. These players sound like they were in your games and you were supposed to be keeping these players safe and you weren't necessarily able to do that in this environment. Well, that's like, you know, that's tough because there's no way that I could ever keep it safe because I'm not running the game integrity team like for the company and I'm not seeing any of the, like the back end of the security. So without like seeing any of this stuff and having your hands like in that regard, like how are you ever gonna really make this assessment evaluation in, in, that, in that way? So what you're saying is that there could have been cheating happening. You got it's not your responsibility. Well, no, it's not that I re I resign like responsibility. There was just only so much that you know that I could do. Of course, I w I would love to police the games and have as little you know as little wrong going on as possible. But when you're the poker room manager, you know, for the company, and you're not seeing. You're not involved in these game integrity disputes. You're not involved in these, you know, we think this guy's cheating. What do you think? You know, I would continuously send them messages and say, hey, you know, there was a fishy hand between this person and this person, or, you know, a few people wrote me and said that this guy is using art. So I was relaying information from the players of what, if they ever thought that something was going wrong, I was passing it over to management and they would make their internal investigation i just never had the privilege to be a part of that internal investigation so during these games i'm told by uh told asses by justin bonimo he said that in these games he was playing in that there was some situation that took place and that people in the game were 
you basically vouched for these games and you said, hey, you know, if anything goes down here, I'll I'll reimburse you. Or if people lose money from cheating going on in the games, which then I found out there was cheating going on in the games, then you would be able to cover this money that these players lost in this game. And these guys played in this because, which is basically, you're describing your poker site right now, right? And this is what, this is what I'm wondering, right? Like, there's no way though that I vouch that that never happened that I vouch for if any cheating went on. I vouch for the money that they had on the site, which I always every person always got paid, and you know they they never had an issue, and that's why people were playing on the site with large amounts of money because I was vouching that you know if you have X amount of dollars on your GG Poker account, you know it's guaranteed 100% by me. Mm -hmm. Which I made good of every one of those guarantees to all those players throughout the whole history of me doing business with them. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? I mean, I think a lot of people out there feel like they were, that they basically had equity or they had money taken in this situation. I mean, this is, these are really important issues, right? These are serious fucking things we're talking about here, right? If you're, anybody out there, I mean, if they're helping to facilitate millions of dollars being taken from the high stakes players, would you, do you think that's a problem? Oh no, of course. That's like the, the biggest problem. But you know, to, to come and, you know, to a first off, you know, any, any type of since we're talking about GG and we kind of skimmed over it a bit, you know, there there was no instance where I was ever telling people to, you know, soft play or collude anyone else at any point. Did I ask people, you know, hey, start this satellite, hey, start this game, which I was taking them for to get the games running? Absolutely. But there was, no, you know, there were, there would have been messages that could have been shown. And it, it, you know, there were so many people that I staked. And also, you know, my whole career, you know, the whole reason I'd say that I'm even still, I survived this poker career because I went broke. I went into the negative many times over. The thing that saved me was that I always did honest, clean business with everyone that I dealt with. I paid out when I had money. I took my integrity and reputation very seriously. So to imagine a person that, you know, is focused on continuous growth while also is, you know, like you said, in a very great situation where signing up a lot of players, helping a site to transform into something bigger. And that's how you're going to, you're going to make money by, you know, the site getting bigger, offering more games and you having a big player pool mm -hmm. to insinuate or imagine that I would be, ever be involved in any type of collusion, cheating in any type of way is, you know, something crazy because, you know, I kept my integrity when I was negative millions in the hole. Now I find myself in a spot where I won the Triton tournament. I was in the best point of my career to say that now I'm going to, you know, do these things that I would never do at any point in my career. It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. So what you're saying is that all this stuff Martin Zamani's saying is inaccurate. You're saying that, I mean, listen, we pull, we pull these texts up. Let me kind of run through the, this article here, right? So I got this article from Poker News, which basically said, Martin Zamani speaks out, do messages reveal what Bryn Kenny know? And now I would agree with you that in this situation, right, there really isn't a lot of evidence that this Martin Zamani guy's brought forward. Because what he's brought forward is, he's brought forward now, it said, I guess he got this from George Wolf these screenshots of conversations that you had. And when you go through it, I think it kind of does show that you were knowing that ghosting was going on. You knew that people were playing on more than one account. You knew that people were well, the, the, actually multi-accounting. The, the more than one account thing, like let's clarify something here too. The way that GG Poker started was there were multiple skins on the site and you could use more than one platform for more than one name. There was also transitions where players moved from one platform to another one. So that wasn't, so, it, it needs more than one account. So it was more like pointing out that this person is now on, is, is on this account saying that, it, because it's, it's not, you know, multi-accounting, it's, you know, what, it's what happened in that time period of it. You know, you've got guys who, you know, not from my doing, but that personally made, you know, five, six different accounts. Like you said, if you're in the know, you know that a lot of people made a lot of different accounts to try to avoid, you know, maybe the rake back system was a bit skewed after you play a certain amount of hands. It wasn't something that was necessary, that was strictly enforced. Whereas at the same time, you know, I wasn't having people switch their own accounts from, you know, this account to the other account. Did it happen sometimes because of, 
things that happened with the network, yes, but that wasn't, that's not in the form of, you know, multi-accounting. So what you're saying is people were sometimes switching accounts, it sounds like, right? It sounds like sometimes one guy would use this account, one guy would use this account, this account no, got banned. I mean, that you read, if you go over this screenshot here, I mean, this, and once again, right, these aren't, you know, none of this stuff is, is surprising. I know that this is something that people have done to circumvent things. And really, it, you know, a lot of these things aren't very talked about at all in the poker world. So it's not like these things aren't going down, but you're basically saying someone's account's banned. So plan a different account. No, not banned. You know, this is something that they were able to make it a new account and they're not sharing accounts at the same time. You know, they had an account in the past and now they have a new account. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that you never sent in someone else to go finish any of these tournaments. It wasn't a setup thing. You didn't have one of the guys, Sergey. You didn't have one of the coaches. You're saying that you never set up any ghosting for no, your stable. Never is a strong word. I said in the Sarah interview that in the past that there had been some ghosting instances that happened. If you also go through the George Wolf messages from 2018, you would find that I, I actually at one at one point I had I made a very hard stance that you know I want nothing to do with any type of ghosting or anyone helping the other that I want to invest in a person that's playing on their own account. I have other messages around that same time which are the same way that I went towards other people. So in in that year, let's in 2018, where their messages were, were there a, maybe there were a handful of times where you know this person helped this person, but after that date, you know I had people that I staked to were hundred dollar average buy in players who wound up making the final table of a millionaire maker, and they they called me and they assumed that I would help them. I wouldn't help them in a single hand. They were being coached on the side by guys like Sergi, by Burt Stevens also. Like in the meantime, to try to put in work in their game, because of course, if you're gonna be staking people, you want them to be putting in work in their game. But past that day, nobody was, was helping anyone at any point in their tournaments. I took a super hard stance against it because I would say at that point- Well, I, I, I actually don't understand why. Like, why would you at that point in time? If you're facilitating this and-, and uh, I mean, but what's, but what's facilitating, you know, it, it happening, you know, once or twice in a message from someone that you're doing the most business with. Why where, would it doesn't make any sense what you're saying, right? Why would it only happen once or twice? Like, why would a guy only do it one time? It don't make any, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, right? You got, I got one horse saying that it's commonplace and you're saying once or twice. I mean, it so seems more where, like, where, where, it, is in, where is it in his messages? Because he put all of his messages about me. There's not that mm -hmm. there's nothing between me and Martin of saying, you know, you help someone else or have someone else help you in a tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when you look through but the, how, how does that, but anyway, how does no, that? No, no, I mean, no, listen, let's, let's talk about this, right? So on here, it says Kenny to Wolf. So you can play only play two party accounts. Anyway, you can play one being your account. One's Luke account. So it sounds like here you're telling this guy that he can use more than one account. Go use that account or use this account. I mean, I don't know what what is this saying? Like, what am I reading here? Right? Like, what this looks pretty straightforward to me. You can play one being your account and one Luke's account. You're telling me it's a one time thing. This first time it happened. It only happened one oh, time. I never, I never told you there was a fir the first time it happened. I told, I said that I've staked hundreds of people like my whole career, and that it had happened in the past that I've helped people before that. And in some instances, there were horses of mine who helped other horses of mine, but- Right, right. So you're saying you didn't you didn't play on the accounts, but people that you knew or that you were doing business with were doing things like this. No, like it, like there, I know there's an instance of, you know, a help like cloud in this tournament. You're talking about, you know, five, yeah. Did I say to, you know, help this guy maybe in, you know, with his game, yeah, of course. But you know, it, like I said, and a hundred percent is the truth. You know, I, I staked hundreds of people my whole career. I never at any point had a stable that the better player was taking over for the worst player. Mm -hmm. I went broke five, seven times over throughout my whole poker career, staking people. But personally, I never lost in poker games that I was playing. So if I had this mastermind, you know, plan that was etched out, you know from all these days, then there wouldn't have been any losing. Um, these people weren't- no, no, I, I, I disagree with that actually, right? So, cause I've been thinking about that a lot because you mentioned that during the poker news thing uh, is that the accounts that were named were losing, right? But I don't know what else you were going on. If you said you, you, said you invest in a thousand people, you said you got the investing addiction. 
I heard that your deal really good in terms of the rake that you're making from these games and some of the no cap rakes, some of the high stakes games. So you're making money from, I don't know what kind of fee, right? I don't know whether fees are in there, right? How, how, how these things are settled, how that works. But I do know in the game, you're taking a pretty big cut, uh, potentially what's happening. So now if you're staking multiple accounts in the game, well, at some point in time, some accounts are going to be losing accounts. So to me, if you, we don't, we don't know. And this is the, and here's the big call out I have to GG Poker. That's why I want everybody to go to GG Poker and go to GG Poker and they can prove if you're lying or not. If you're telling the truth and none of this shit happened, these guys have all the data. They done bought the whole industry up. They sponsor every player. They're out there in the World Series of Poker. These guys started the Poker Integrity Council. Can you believe that? GG Poker started the Poker Integrity Council. These guys have all the information, what you're saying. If what you're saying didn't happen, if you ran the tight ship, if they know who you were moving money to, who you were letting move money move, they got records, they got the data. So in this situation, why don't they just come out and say you did or didn't do it? If you got the relationship with these guys, you were working with these guys, it, it feels like it's on, to me, these guys got to come out and say, hey, here's what happened with this guy. Well, like, do it yourself. You know, I, I've never been, been banned on GG Poker ever. You know, I've never had my account frozen, suspended. I've only had one person that I had as a horse on there that had their account banned. So, you know, if, if this were, if this happened, like you said, they did an investigation through all this stuff. After this happened, they looked at my accounts, they looked at the horses accounts that were named, they looked at other people that I had a connection to, and all of those people are still playing on GG today. So you're saying that you weren't banned and the Poker Integrity Council didn't allow you back in to be joined by them? Well, what was like allowed back in because I've never been banned on GG. So I've never not been allowed to be in. Like I've had a relationship with people at the top of the company from when I started with the company. There was no point ever that that I was under, maybe internally they had me under some investigation that they didn't see, but my account was never frozen. Like I said, I've stayed countless people on there. Their accounts were never frozen. Cheating. And of course, you know, when, when a story like this comes out, of course they're gonna do their due diligence and see if this is true that this actually happened. And I still played recently on GG, so that means that they did an extensive review on myself, on the allegations that were made against me. Me, myself, I'm losing a large amount of money on GG also. Hmm. Interesting, Bren, interesting. No, there, are, there are also, you know, countless guys who at the same time that I was doing business with, you know, who could attest that, you know, I never asked them to ever do a shady thing. I never enforced them. to. I mean, do that's not true. That's not true. The guy literally went on our podcast and said the exact opposite. So when you say you can't find a guy, we got a guy. We did find a guy. We, then we found another guy. Lauren Roberts came out and said, come on of similar things. So... This, there is more than one person, right? I, but, but listen, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, no one would be this fired up if it was one guy. If it's one guy, Martin Zamani came out, we can make an argument, right? We know, we know how this shit works. We can make a great argument. This guy knows what the fuck he's talking about, right? If I really want to make that argument, you can say like, what, what was this guy, right? Where, do, where does he come from? What's his proof? What's his background? Where's his receipts? Where are the receipts at, right? Mike Posso, we see a guy looking at his crotch area and then playing like a god. We got the receipt there. In this situation, Martin Zamani, I don't know where he gets a text from George Wolf, right? He gets these messages from George Wolf. In theory, right? I do feel like this guy would have more information as well, too. If this, I don't know if the guy's, if he's thinking like that, maybe his data got deleted. Who fucking knows what happened in the information? But for as much as the guy's putting out, I, I, I would like to see more from his side as well, too. So I don't, I don't disagree, but I guess answering your questions and seeing it, it kind of sounds like there was more going on in these games that you were participating in. You know, that's sort of my big takeaway. I think that's the takeaway that a lot of people out there have. And I think that's what, you know, I guess it's, it's that's how things go, right? Some people think that they're going to have that impression on you. Some people think that a certain site isn't safe to play on. And if you're saying that you want to run a fucking poker site, if you're saying that you're hiring former poker stars executives who have given their life to this game and this community, and you're going to hire these people to be a part of this thing that who knows what the fuck that you got in mind for it, if these allegations are true against you, I think that's just fucking kind of fucked up, man, right? Because if you're saying we're try trying to help these people and grow and I'm trying to give them a job, I'm trying to give them a poker site they can be proud to work for versus what poker stars has become, which I would agree that's needed. I think the idea is great, but the things I'm hearing, I mean, you, you know, I, I guess I guess some people might struggle to be an advocate for your side or for your site or for the situation that well, these workers have now got themselves into with you. 
well, do you think that these people would all join the company if the intentions were wrong in the company? Because, you know, it's not me who's managing things and what we do in game integrity, what we do in operations, what we do in payments. I've continued what we do in regulatory, what we do in development. These are things that I've, le I've been learning overnight. So all they know is the intention of the way that I want this company to run. And then in the end of the day, these are the people who run the company. It's not me who runs the company. It's, you know, the person who runs the game integrity team runs game integrity. We do things flow up and decisions are made by me, of course, but would these people join a company if the intention was wrong? 100%. I mean, listen, I don't know. I started working with companies as an advisor. Most of these guys hate their fucking bosses. They don't want to be there. They And then they go in the meeting and they talk like they're nice. So maybe, maybe, maybe you should bring some of the guys in of the company and, you know, ask them for their perspective. I don't I don't disagree with that, right? Because it is it is something that's interesting to me. People say, well, I want to have you on. I mean, you don't seem like you're going anywhere. You seem like you want to be around here for a long time. If we're going to have you around the community, then I think people really want to get better, get answers, right? You've explained yourself, you've been given answers, right? So I feel like that's that's the main reason, motivator for me, why I even did this, because I was kind of enjoying the, the private life, but getting in this mix, it leads to more investigation. It leads to foul and four poker. What's gonna happen with four poker? What's gonna happen with this site? What's gonna happen with the PR? What are these guys gonna do? What are they gonna say? What kind of tricks do you got up, up your sleeve, right? You obviously got a big vision that you wanna disrupt the way that the game is played and you wanna, you think, to me, my takeaway is you think that you are one of the biggest reasons why GG Poker was able to have success and that you think that your ideas are that good and you're willing to set out with this new venture to try to prove that, hey, I really do know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't think anyone at the top of GG Poker would argue with that either. Interesting. So I guess in this situation, the people want to know why would they... You know, why would they trust you, man? Why would they put their money on there? Why would they why would they be an ambassador for your site? I mean, why would they partner with you? Why would they take that like why would they do these things for people who, you know, feel some different type of way about the situation? Because a lot of people out there think in the community do feel it's a different situation. And then when people partner with you, those people usually gotta feel that, but maybe not, you know. I don't know. Poker it never it hasn't happened in the past in poker. Dan Negranu left poker stars and no one cares, whatever. He facilitated that whole thing. No one gives a fuck, whatever, fine. Poker stars did that, whatever, no one cares. Okay, great. You know, so maybe they don't, maybe people don't care as long as you put on a good game and give them place games to play. People are degenerates, so I don't know. Well, I mean, I think that you, you know, you build something, you know, my intention from the beginning with building this site was to build something that was great for the community. Like I've loved poker so much my whole life. Uh, I feel the same way as you, that there's been a point where you know, this RTA cheating, like things that have gone on have been sullying the way that poker's seen and the reach that it has to potentially grow. I see poker as the best game in the world. So my intention from the beginning, and you know, I think the reason why a lot of these, these are, a, a lot of these guys are execs who didn't leave poker stars. They have, they've had countless offers from all other gaming companies. But I think what I did, I came with an intention of something that was similar to the early day poker stars that was very interested in uh, customer experience from game integrity to loyalty, to customer support, to offering a, a product and a home for the, the people who love the game the most. And from my experience, I've taken, I've taken everything that I thought that would make the best poker site to grow the game and that's where that's how i got into this wow chat chat's fired up what are you guys thinking out there so far give me some comments in the chat i gotta read from some sponsors they got i got mixed up with it man i gotta give a big shout out to, to one of my main sponsors for a long time chip leader coaching my guys chance cornet alex foxen over at chip leader coaching they're giving away a package of their closer 10-week course teach you how to be a better closer i mean listen good, good guys to learn from they're going away three months of their chip leader coaching AI training and an hour with chance. I mean, listen, I get these guys to give away a pretty good giveaway for the community. So these are for my people. Uh, you can enter below YouTube links in the description. Also comment below, not live stream. Sorry guys, comment below. And I'm going to choose two players and you guys are going to play heads up for one more package. I made them give me a second package. So shout out to those guys, shout out chip leader coaching. Always been a great partner of mine and I uh, love those guys very much. Also, we got Manscaped last minute. Listen, Shout out to Manscaped Bush. I know Brent Kenny is using is using Manscaped. These uh these bushes, the listen, Brent, 
they sent me one of these Manscaped products to shave my balls. And I swear to God, I was scared to shave my balls all growing up in my life. I thought, you know, the girls, they always say shave and you're a hairy guy, whatever, right? They sent me this product. I used this product. I swear to God, this is one of the best products I ever used in my life. I am very happy to promote Manscaped. Thank you to Manscaped for wanting to be a part of what we got going on here on the Poker Life Podcast. And these guys got great product. Listen, I, I'm endorsing that product, all right? Shout out to Manscaped as well. And listen, we had to include my guys from Gorilla Gaming. Uh, you know Glenn, you know he's in the mix, Gorilla Gaming Glenn. These guys are the best poker tables in poker. They're at the World Series of Poker. We're doing a custom Big Poppy poker table coming out here soon. And uh, listen, we love Glenn, we love these guys. These guys are awesome. I wanted to give them some love, help out the, my friends, my partners. Thank you for sponsoring the show, guys. And uh, damn, that was fired up. Um, I, I, I get, there's the look at the table, World Series of Poker table. I get kind of nervous about doing these sponsor things because I'm, I'm kind of, I've never really taken on sponsors, but I realized everybody in Poker Brin has sponsors. They all have people that they're affiliated with. And uh, I guess in your situation, right, do you see that, how important do you think that partnerships are for, for what you're trying to do? Because it sounds like partnerships are a huge part of how you operate in poker if you're helping to facilitate games and being a host of the game. I think partnerships are massive, like in this business and in everything in life. I think that you know, if you if you want to do anything great, you're going to need a strong team with you, believing in you know that similar drive, passion that you have to create what it is that you're trying to create. So mm -hmm. I've had a lot of players in the high stakes community who have invested in the site before and after these allegations were made, and I think they do so from knowing me for a long time. People you know, all from all around the world. So I see those partners from, you know, the early days of GG because, or the early days of poor poker, because, you know, if you see guys who are playing on the site, who you trust and respect what they have to say, and they're saying that they believe in and like and trust the site and the company, that's what's gonna help to drive your traffic. So, partnerships, right? I mean, obviously influencer marketing, what you're describing influencer marketing is how GG Poker won. GG Poker signed the best ambassadors. ACR has had a chance to sign a lot of ambassadors and they've gone with more of the lower profile. A lot of these Twitch streamers, a few of the video bloggers, poker stars who have said we want to, or GG Poker rather said, we want to get the most famous people in each part of the world and bring them onto our team. So in the thinking initially, you were brought on as one of the original partners for GG Poker, as you've explained because you did have this very good profile in the community, at least right winning the high stakes tournaments. I don't know necessarily outside of that. I'm not that close in the tournament world to follow exactly what people are saying, but it sounds like this idea of partnerships is, has been something that you put a lot of thought into. And I guess that's what confuses me when I see not only Martin Zamani, but then I see what took place with Lauren Roberts. So what is your relationship like with Lauren Roberts and how exactly did she get thrown into this whole situation? And her account got thrown into the situation as well, too. Well, she was she was one of the people who were playing on GG Poker from like from the early days. She was playing in a lot of poker games and yeah, how she got thrown in, I'd say it was her decision to throw herself in. Okay, so let's talk about this, Bryn, right? I thought about this a lot because in poker, we always, we, no, okay. we often see certain people use a strategy of they befriend the whale and they basically integrate themselves in these people's lives. And in this situation, it sounds like what you said on the podcast, I just want to make sure I understand. You said that you were living with her and her husband, Joel. Joel is an older guy, right? She came into town. She started playing high stakes games. I met her briefly. I don't know much about Lauren. I know she befriended other people in the poker community. And I know that you were certainly one of those people. So what, what happened? How did you end up moving in with her and her husband? That was, that, that was never my, you know, I, I've been, I've befriended tons of people in the community who are businessmen and I've never taken that line or approach with any of them. Uh, I would say that, you know, of course you don't know, but I would say it, it says right there, if people were signing up for GG, trusting the fact that I was guaranteeing for it, they were, they had a good feeling about me. They had a good interaction with me from the past. Otherwise, you know, first off, you wouldn't have had all these people's numbers. Second of off, you wouldn't have had relations with people where they actually trust you. So the way that uh, Lauren, um, I the way we met, I think it was at a poker table somewhere and you know, we're just playing and hanging out. And she told me the next time that you come to Vegas, you know, please stay at my place. 
So it was the summer of 2018. Yeah, the summer of 2018, I came out to the World Series. I stayed at her place that summer. The, mm -hmm. I was helping her with her poker game, trying to improve. She was playing nosebleed games at the time, you know, million dollar cash games that you could win or lose at the time. And, you know, it was, Lauren was someone that I liked a lot as a person. We laughed a lot. We went on trips around to different places. Um, you know, so, I mean, my intention was never to take advantage of her or anybody else. I mean, that she feels that way, you know, that's her feelings. And I'm not here to discount that that happened. Hmm. So you, why are you, I mean, why are you staying with this lady? Like, I don't understand. You're staying with this lady and her husband because she has a bunch. Of, I mean, listen, this is common, right? I meet a lot of people who have money and they basically invite you to stay at their place all the time. I don't know why this happens because usually they got a nice place. Usually they're trying to host you. They want to share their riches with the fucking world. I get this all the time, right? People are always saying, hey, come stay here, fly here, do this, do that. I'm like, oh my God, right? Just because you got a pot. It's weird what, how that works. So I'm, I, I can understand why you would do that. But then you said that the lady was getting uncomfortable with you and your girlfriend and like, while you were putting her on GG Poker and she was losing millions of dollars oh, and she didn't pay you. It was on credit. What's putting on? I wasn't, yeah, she was playing on GG Poker, absolutely, while right. telling me she had, you know, a certain amount of money. And when I came into the house, I planned on staying for a few days. Her and her husband were both, you know, incessant of me staying there for longer and mm -hmm. enjoying my company and me being around and not wanting me to go anywhere else. So. Yes, they had a nice place that had a nice pool. I had a room downstairs and I was comfortable down there. But before this time and all throughout my life, I've paid for my whole trips everywhere. No Have you? I mean, I don't, who knows? We, we don't, who knows, right? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I know a lot of, listen, I'm, in, uh, bro, I've been living in Vegas now seven years. This is the most common strategy I see people use. And I'm not saying it's a bad strategy. I'm just saying, because I start going to the nightclub, now I see, Whoa, right? You start hanging around certain I, musician guys, people. They guys, you, they don't they don't pay for a lot of shit. They get on the jet. I saw you in the photo with Lauren Roberts in the jet, right? People want to get on the jet. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. I want to yeah, get on the I private jet and the nice car and the, the nice dinners, them. man. You know, I, I paid for that jet. You paid for you know, the jet. I, she didn't I, pay I, for the jet. I paid for that jet and any jet that she ever came on, any dinner okay. that we went on together, any trip that we went on. You know, I'm I paid for it. And people in the high stakes community who have seen me throughout the whole time. They know that I've had, I'm the I'm the one who's had you know let's say a bunch of friends around who was paying for everyone's whole way the whole time. You ask people who have been around the high stakes community for like a, lo a long career, and they would say that without a doubt that's what happened. So mm -hmm. no one ever bankrolled my life. I paid for my own way throughout my whole life, my own career, and paid the way of lots of the way for many people that I staked and many people that were around me. There's there's not a person in the world that could say that they spent time with me and paid more money than I did for what we were doing. Hmm. I mean, surely there'd be a person, right? I mean, whether they want to come out and say it, they probably spent a lot of money. It's probably like Lauren Robert, like most, no one wants to come out and, and say, they don't want to get dragged into this, right? Like they don't want their fucking name brought into this. And for me and you to discuss right. this on the podcast with thousands of people watching, they, they're not going to come to me. That's how I see it, right? And, but I'm not saying what you're saying is not, Accurate. I don't know, right? I gotta. I'll let me talk with more people that you know. Let me get a deeper relationship with some of those people. I know a few of the people that you know. Let me have that conversation on my level to at least say, okay, well, is this is this accurate or not? Because that's all I can do. Is really is I, I I hear your word. If I want to know more, I got. It's my choice to follow up on that situation and find more out. Because I think a lot of people feel like you you were taking advantage of this lady, bro. It sounds like that they think that you were signing her up. She says, or Martin says that you. She was so bad that you would basically command the horses go after her in the games. That's, That's crazy, right. bro. You living in this lady. That the accusation is you're living with a lady. You're helping her facilitate in the games that you organize, and you're setting her up to get beaten down by the team. I mean. GG Poker can verify this 100 percent, right? If we really got to see it, that's been nothing that I've ever done, like my whole career in any way. You know, to do anything to take advantage of someone like that, and it just didn't happen like that. Didn't happen like that. Okay. So you, it was just. I mean, I mean she, yeah. I, I gave her lots of credit to play lots of games. Mm -hmm. At one point, she owed me over two million dollars. She told me that 
you know, she said, no worries. You know, I have all this money and, you know, kept asking for more credit. Uh, after when, when she, she got so stuck, I start, she actually, she started staking Sergi with me at some point, he won a big tournament in EPT Barcelona at the hundred K there. Uh, she had a piece of my Triton tournament that I got second place in Jeju. So the number of her owing me like 2.2 million at one point was actually down to 700, but then she was, she never, she didn't pay me any of the money that she ever owed me. So take advantage of what I could <laughs> Wait, what? She didn't, she didn't say, she, so you didn't, so you're telling me that you were letting her lose on credit and then she didn't pay you. Yeah, and she would, ver she would verify that she didn't pay you as well. I would ask her for the money. All those texts are me asking for the money that she owes me. So yeah, right. she never paid. She kept getting more and more credit and then just didn't pay. So what about the accusation that you would, and this one, I mean, this one is common, right? And this one, I want to really talk about this one with you, Bryn, because do, how, how serious do you think ghosting is where a guy or a girl goes on the fun player account or goes on maybe another regulars account and participates in high stakes games, maybe games that they want more than one account in, maybe games that they can't get into, maybe a game where they just feel like they got a good spot and the other person is going to think that there's someone else. How serious of an issue do you think that is right now in the high stakes online poker world? I think it's a, I, I'm not sure, you know, how much of it, like how many people actually do it because I have no insight into that, but I think it's a horrible thing for the game for sure to go into someone else's account and try to take advantage of that. So, you know, you've got two conflicting stories here. Story A is, you know, my horses are taking advantage of her and hopping in and story B that I'm like playing on her account for some advantage somehow. But what do you mean? Oh, no, okay, okay. What, no, no, no. That's a big advantage, buddy. I mean, if you're, if I don't know what the reason would be, but come on, we can agree. Not, we, so you're not agreeing that if you, if if you, why do you think Jungle Man did it, right? This guy Jungle Man was doing that in the one game. It came out. I don't think anybody cares, Bryn. I really don't. Jungle Man is literally hosting a podcast with every single person in poker coming on the show. Nobody really cares. I think that's what I've learned is no one cares about this because yeah, it well, is happening so often. It's like whatever. Like let's not talk about it. Let's let's keep it moving. If, I, if that's what was happening, you know, then I probably would I wouldn't have like any you know problem to say it then if that's how people look at. But at no point did I have any any action of hers in any tournament. So you know, if she was playing with credit for money that she owed in the end. I I was never staking her. I never was like, hey, I'm going to take a piece of this tournament right here. So. Not at any point of any time did I have a single percent of any of the action of her or her account. Hmm. I mean, why would you? Well, I would if I was taking advantage, like you're saying, of playing on her account. Well, I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, listen. I don't know. I don't know what kind of. I don't think. I don't agree with that, right? I don't. There's definitely schemes people can come up with where they're going to do something with this, right? I haven't thought about that much. I don't know exactly what it is, but. To me, there's a big advantage. There's a reason why this is common. I mean, this happens all the time. People do this all yeah, the time. to make money, though. Right, the, the, exactly. The reason why it's common is to make money, but if I don't have a piece of the action... Well, you could have made money from somebody else. I mean, you could make money from someone else, lose money to the other accounts that, you're, that you already have big pieces of, right? You see what I'm saying? When you have action of five people in the game, you go, all five of us go beat up this guy. This happens, right? This is going well, on right now in games. This isn't uncommon. You know, Martin, Martin claimed people in the high stakes, you know, he was saying that, you know, Justin Bonomo and Nick Petrangelo's account were like parts of this like ring that was going on. He kept spouting off names of people that I had zero action of at any point. Mm -hmm. You know, in these games that Lauren was playing, you know, you could look at the whole list. They're some of the most like respected people that are in the industry and I had no piece of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what piece you had or not. Right? You know, I, I guess I I don't know. I I I agree. It's I I maybe you didn't. Right? You probably didn't. But one thing I've learned living in Vegas, buddy, is that one thing I've learned living in Vegas, and one thing I learned from a guy who starts a company, is that normally those people are liars. Right? They don't. I, this is what I've been learning. This is stand. This is called standard in the corporate world, when they they basically people only talk about what they did. They don't talk about what people have accused them of and what they got up and stuff and everything else. They just sort of just deny so and then they try to make themselves look good it just sounds like in this situation you're really not giving me much until i ask you about it like sarah herring did the interview talked about these things a lot of these ideas are things i mean maybe it's because the questions weren't specific but uh, you know to me right that's just that's my sort of takeaway in the situation is just like it well, just you know, seems like so much going on justin bonomo is sending me sending me messages about this saying hey ask Brent about this lauren roberts is saying 
what she's, her experience with her. You talked about living in her house. When I think about living in a, a person with money's house, why would I be living in a person with money's house unless I was trying to get money from that person? Maybe I really enjoyed hanging out with them. Maybe they were so such a fucking great time and I just loved that space so much and I just loved every moment with them, which it appears that Lauren felt that way with you with the post that I saw her make on Twitter about the friendship she had with you. And then now she feels like you really took advantage of her. And so now if you're facilitating the action of the big poker site, do you think that's a, a problem? I mean, do you think that it's a problem that poker players are treating other poker players like this, the recreationalists that come into the game and that are putting them on sites? Bill Perkins talked about playing with Jungle Man in that game or playing with whoever in that game. He was mad about it. He didn't even know this was going on. These people don't know this is going on. They don't understand how poker works. You are privy to an understanding of how this game works and this business works that to me should be held at a higher level of standard than somebody new that comes into the game. And if you wanna run a poker site, to me, these things really need to be discussed, even though they aren't in our industry. And that's why the industry is in the situation it's in with the people who are running these sites and the kind of activity that is taking place in poker, right? So I see a different vision for what this game could be. And it really, it isn't it, right? It ain't it, it's not it. I used to think so one way, now I realize none of that shit fucking matters. So that's what makes me passionate about this. And to me, when I talk with you, I, I, you know, it just seems like this is the way, this is a great way to, you know, make, make, make a lot of money, right? Make a lot of money from the rank and set these games up and still be a part of the poker world. And, you know, I'm not saying it's not a bad plan and I'm not saying it's not going to succeed. It's just that, you know, it's sad to believe that this is the way that high stakes poker really works to me. And I think a lot of other people out there feel the same way. Yeah, well, so there's you, a whole difference between, you know, having getting people to play tournaments and, you know, taking advantage of, you know, people playing accounts or some type of cheating going on. So was it beneficial for me to get people to play? Was it beneficial for her to play in games to make other people play? Of course, but there's not like in terms of, you know, any type of cheating or, you know, RTA use that's been talked about before, you know, there's not much that I could give you because it didn't happen in, the, in, in, in any instance ever. I've never been a cheater. I've, I've, I, to myself, you know, maybe I, I would say for sure, I've made loads of mistakes throughout my life, but mm -hmm. my intention is always to have high morals and a high, you know, importance of what I do and yeah, everything I do and what I believe in. Have I made lots of mistakes? Of course, because I've tried, you know, many times over and over. And, you know, as we're, we started this journey when, you know, I started playing poker at 15 years old. I'm mm -hmm. 35 now. Like the amount that you learn in that time spirit, it's like you grow up in the game and, you know, you, you try to learn and grow into the person that you want to be. Okay. I mean, I don't disagree with that, right? You know, we all make mistakes. We all got to move forward and figure out our own way we want to handle it. You know, some people say one thing and do another thing. And a lot of people do that. We know that a lot of people say they want to do this. They're this way. They're that way. And they ain't that way. A lot of people are fucking Fugazi. They, me, right. They, 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 been so important to me. Yeah, but that's, and that's, what's weird. And this is what I'm saying, bro. This is what I know about you. We come on podcasts. We have conversations. You, you've told me these things, right? I see the comments. People say other things. I'm like, whatever, you know, this guy, different kind of guy, right? He got his own approach. He'd look at it a certain way. He got a different vision. He got a different mindset. Like, Great, right? I'm pretty accepting everybody in the poker community when I meet them. But then when I see Bonimo coming in with the message saying about these games, and then I see about the guys cheating in the games, they were cheating directly in these games. These guys were doing it. You were so you were putting horses into games that you were organizing where people were cheating using RTA and multi accounts that you had to have known that they were using because allegedly they got more than 50 accounts. You were the one helping to facilitate all this activity. So I would find it hard to believe that you would let the RTA or guys never, in. I was never helping facilitate any type of RTA or any type of cheating. In but any you way. let these guys in the game. You're or it's your games. You, 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 these guys kept coming back. They got banned allegedly multiple times and they kept coming back in the games. How did they get back in the games? Oh, no, we're not talking about bands. You know, they, they, when people were switching like account from the other, it wasn't because they got banned in the game and they were still playing. If there was ever a time where a person had been banned on the site and I think that they're using a new account, I would report it instantly to GG. So at no point was I, did I ever know that anyone was cheating and still com and still playing and competing in any games. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Yeah, man. I don't know, bro. I mean, yeah, it sounds. It makes sense. It's just that it seems like in that world, I just think about what if I was organizing that game. I know how these private game works. A guy put the game on. They invite the person that's going to lose hundred thousand dollars. They send in four people. 
the guy, each person maybe get a 10% free roll and then the host takes the rest of the action. And a lot of horses are okay with this. And it sounds like in this situation, you were staking a lot of people in those games. They were all sharing action, whether you told them to collude or whether you, whether you commanded them. Sharing action. Everyone's, everyone has like a separate deal themselves. So all that matters to them is if they win themselves. While at the same time, you know, you're not looking at an instance where I was signing up these recreational players and they were only playing with my horses. I signed up every person. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I signed up the whole high stakes community and they were all playing every day. So, you know, I, you were playing, you look at the list of all the biggest winners in poker and I signed up every single one of them to play in these like games on GG. So right. if my intention was to take the mud, take as much money as I possibly could from these amateurs or VIPs, I would have never been writing, you know, Isaac Haxton and Nick Petrangelo and Kuhn and all these guys and getting them signed up to play <laughs> on the circuit playing every day. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Sometimes you let the ringer in, you know, sometimes they, sometimes you cut the ringer in, you take a 10% free roll for yourself or 15 for yourself or something like that. You get them in the game. I mean, I think that's a yeah, pretty I common. Except I, never, I never did that to anyone. I never took a free no. roll or a piece of anyone to get them in the game. I signed people up to a site to try to grow the platform and to grow, grow the games that were offered. Yeah, I mean, and that's really what it does seem like. It seems like you had this great setup where you didn't really need to do these things. Like you didn't need to tell the people to work together. And so Martin Zamani comes out, says that you were using RTA yourself, that you were, I mean, the thing about the RTA thing that I, I somewhat question is that, is that it really wasn't in any of the information. Like I didn't, there weren't a text message I saw anything about using a solver or anything like that. Now it's just one person, not one thing. I would, I would like to see more about that, but you know, the RTA stuff, but it also, it also does seem like it's commonplace. Like everyone uses it, right? It's like, un, it's like an unspoken. Less of that, of course, because I've never seen an RTA system myself. Like, you know, my, you look at like my results online, you know, I'm a barely, I'm a, like a consistent winner on stars, huge loser on GG, like recently when like online has changed. Like I've done my crushing in the in the live poker setting. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. I just heard that in these games, you know, if you're the affiliate, you're making millions of dollars in these games because there's. Well, what's really, I mean, that's, everyone likes to you know pump something up to being much bigger than it is. Well, at the same time, you know, you're giving people large amounts of credit if you're getting burned by that in a few times. You know, people might think in their mind that you're making millions of dollars. You might not have actually even made any money for, you know, the first one or two years because you were trying to build a business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Martin in the chat said he never said Bryn used the RTA. Yeah, I don't know why people keep asking about this RTA thing because for the RTA, it, I mean, one, I mean, do you think a lot of people are using the, R the RTA in, in, in poker right now in cash games and in tournaments as someone who is, wants to start a poker site? And it has I, to really worry about this. I don't know about like pure RTA, but I think a lot of people right now in the way that in the high stakes community are you, you know, if they're in a situation, they might have a computer next to them that's inputting, you know, what decision that they should make in this spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that most people probably do that. And uh, as a poker site, how do you stop that? Because it's not that the RTA is unbeatable. It's not that every RTA is built the same depending on how it's programmed, depending on the inputs that it puts in. And certain sites use different strategies to try to combat it. Certain stats maybe go over the data afterwards. Certain companies have in real time measures, they might allege that they can pull off. So how do you think that you can do something different against the people that are trying to RTA or trying to collude or trying to send in ghosts or trying to play on more than one account at the same time or switching accounts? How do you feel as if you'll be able to make a difference with what you're I think doing? Just like, you know, you can all that you could do is attempt to do these things and build different measures and tools. Whereas, you know, when I've thought about, you know, what do you do to combat RTA? In my mind, it's the time bank. You have to mess with the time bank. Otherwise, people have too long where they're able to input information and wait for this, you know, 20, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, however long it takes to get you a conclusion. Whereas if you start giving a lower time bank of how much time they have pre-flop and if people are abusing that 15 seconds pre-flop, you know, one thing that I've I thought about and I, I think that we'll implement, maybe not from day one is, 
if you have people who are taking advantage of that 15 second time bank too often, you drop them to a 10 second time bank and then you drop them to a five second time bank. And what they're used to of having a you know 15 second time bank before their shot clock comes down, now all of a sudden it's just getting lower and lower. And all I think, I think that one thing with poker too, and a lot that I've done also is the players who signed up for the games, I listened to these guys. So if they think that someone was cheating in the game, I would take that information, pass it on to GG. So in the same regard for this company, if people think that someone's cheating and they pass it to me or they pass it to someone else, then it'll be an important thing to have a game integrity review of, of that account and then try to build the best process that you can to try to eliminate as much RTA collusion and ghosting that goes on. Because in my mind, poker at its best form, which is at its purest form, is a mind versus mind game. And if we can solve that and bring it to where people feel like they're playing against a human in a mind versus mind game, I think that's one of the barriers that's stopping poker from really exploding and growing, especially online. Well, I mean, online is stopping it from growing because it's not allowed to be played in a lot of big markets. So a lot of companies are having issues, having to spend a lot of money, worry about security and pull out of markets. Whereas other companies like GG Poker in the past have decided to offer poker in markets where poker stars might not normally market that. So is it in your mind to use a similar strategy where GG Poker is, where they're basically letting people play from anywhere that they live? Oh, no, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the approach, um, one sec. Um, the approach that we're going to have is, well, Poker Stars is a public company, so you know they made decisions based on because they're a public company. So they pulled out of some of these markets that it isn't necessarily banned in, but it's more like seen in a gray way. So Poker Stars and Party Poker decided to go in this direction that if it wasn't clear and regulated, they weren't going to offer in these places. Like, absolutely, we're going to be against any places that poker and gambling is completely illegal, but make, but make an analysis and a decision based on, okay, well, you know, this company that's seen as gray area, you know, what is our head of regulatory think of, you know, that country? Is it clean to go into? What are the risks? What are the pros? So, you know, what I've done with this company right here is try to bring in the best people in the industry and let them build what they feel is, you know, the best in their area. Let it be uh, regulatory or, you know, game integrity, like we said, or customer support, uh, payments or customer operations. All of these areas, you know, I, I, I'm the poker player. I can understand what players want in the form of, what their client looks like, what they want to have features and sit by being connected to the industry and people who love playing, easily able to get feedback like from the industry of what it is that they want. Like all yeah, of I don't, these- I don't, are, I, don't dis I don't disagree. I mean, a lot, I, a lot of people say that you're using me to just promote your site, right? So on one hand, I think about that and I agree if that's true, right? Obviously this is, trying to make things look good for the poker site, you know, and, and use the poker site. So I can't disagree with that. The other, at the, at the other hand, I do think it's important these conversations are gonna be had. And obviously if you're shilling your poker site, what, what else do I expect you to say? If you're in the process now of trying to build your site up, promote your site and raise money for your site, build investor trust, build relationships with fucking the market, the media, the people in it, of course you're going to promote your thing one way, right? So I, I kind of struggle to, to think about how I view this this conversation because I've been studying a lot of corporate media for on my break and the way I thought the world worked is not how the world works. So I'm trying to think about how that applies to poker and what's happening here because a lot of people have, have used me in the past in this world of poker. So I'm very used to it and it is what it is. Whether they want to say, like you said, they're helping me grow. They're giving me this, they're giving me that. I mean, these people are using me to further their agenda. And it seems like in this situation, your agenda is pretty clear. You want to create a poker site. You want to build something like that for people, for the community, for the players, and you wanna turn that into a successful business. And I guess the thing you talk about is how people trusted you. And one business deal that got a lot of talked about, that a lot of people talked about, asked me about, is your relationship with GG Poker Affiliates. Now, I, as an affiliate of poker companies, know how this works. And the thing that you don't expect or want to do is your affiliate partner to take your money. So people have alleged, Martin Zamani included, that the rake back or the affiliate rake that people brought to the site when they were signing up players as an agent 
that you basically just stole these guys' money. Yeah, except that, except Martin was closed down by GG Poker actually, and other people. It's not. See, I if I have people under me, first of all, let's say I have an agent under me. They bring in these players. I don't have a relationship to these players, so actually, when they lose the agency, I actually lose that streamlined money because now, as opposed to them getting funded by the person that they brought on, now they're just not playing anymore, or they created a different account on a different skin. So it's actually not in my best interest for any of my sub agents to get closed down. While on the same side, GG makes has made decisions to close some of my sub agents at different times. And that's not a decision that I've made. It's a decision that the company makes. So GG made it, okay. It, it could be based on, you know, them not being able to bring in volume. It could be based on, you know, them getting complaints from the players of the agent. So GG is the one who closed down Martin's agency and it was not me. So you didn't, so, you didn't steal his rake back. You didn't give him, you, he says that he was owed rake back. He got receipts, you owe him rake back. You never gave him the rake back. Mark owes me money, you know, he, he left it. He so left, you, left. You, you do owe him rake back, but you're saying that you ain't gonna give it to him because he owes you money and oh, why no, would you no, pay no, a guy that owes you money? We made a deal that he would, that he got a certain amount over like a few period of time and that came off of the money that he owed me and still has a balance to me. So I've never stole or taken anything from anyone. Got it, okay, I mean. Do you consider taking money from people at the poker table taking something from anybody? I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess because uh, I've been thinking about the the predatory nature of how these private poker games works. Because I'm thinking about starting my own private game, and it turns out it makes a lot of sense, right? When you bring somebody to the game who wants to lose twenty thousand dollars, and all you got to do is give them some drinks and set up a good environment in a place that we like to call a casino, whether it's online or live, people don't really know any better, and they just go there and they they got money to lose right they, they maybe sometimes they don't except, except this wasn't a private game it was on a, a big network of of all these other skins also so there were no games that were you know private invite only these mm -hmm. were games on a network that was open to the public mm -hmm. but these were also times that you were staking a lot of the players in the games so if you're staking a lot of players in the, i mean this is this is what happens right there's like alert list where you get an alert from your person that's backing you to let you know that fun player xxy has put down fifty thousand dollars more in credit they're going to play in this game it's not saying go fucking sit in the game make me money it's what is it saying right it ain't saying that he ain't saying go sit in the game he letting you know the options there to go enjoy yourself in that game so to me that makes sense this is what the best this is what these guys are up to i mean this is, this is reality what's happening out there you know that so you're saying that you when you're in a very powerful position to know all these things right like that that you know i don't know man those are the things i just have do you, i mean is it just well, is what all, it is? Is it just is what it is in poker? I guess I guess it's just what it is, man. I don't know. I mean, and maybe I gotta accept this is what it is. This is how it works. I mean, I would I know all these things. Like I was on the platform all day running the game, so I, you know the information that I had was what I saw on my poker screen mm -hmm. on on GG Poker that I had open. I had no you know back end this that or anything access to anything at any point. All mm -hmm. that I had was you know GG Poker as a client watching games, you know, so, run and, and So GG and Poker no, has all the answers is what you're saying. This is what I'm getting from this conversation is that I got to go talk to GG Poker because GG Poker has the answers. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, well, I guess I guess they got to get people if they care, right? If they if people want to follow up, they got to go ask Dan Negreanu. They got to go ask they got to go ask Kevin Martin. They got to go ask the GG well, Poker those, investors. Those, those, guys, those guys don't know. You know, they, they don't know. It's GG Poker who knows. Well, that's what I'm no. saying. They got to. They should ask their company to say, "Hey, can you let us know what happened?" Like this to me, I don't know. There's there's so much being accused here. There's so many issues that you're saying didn't go the way that it went. Well, I'm I'm still accepted. You know, on and all on GG, I've never had my account banned. So there's their review of you know me and what I've done on the site. I mean, I guess in some way that that maybe that is what they're saying. Yeah, I mean, if if, if I was dirty, GG Poker would have banned my account already, like they did with. I'm pretty sure they banned 500 accounts for some type of cheating at their peak. Was I'm pretty sure what they told me. My account was never banned. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I had one horse who was ever banned on the site at any point. He's able to play on the site now, and. Uh, yeah, I would say that, that there, I, I think that that's an important answer right there because, you know, all these accusations were, were cheating that was going on on that site while I still have a direct relationship with the people at the top of the company. I still 
you know, I'm a, I still advise or help in some aspects. I've never had anything with my account, with people that were, you know, spoken about here. And I'm still welcome to play there. I'm still welcome to play at the, the live stops that they're affiliated with. And just like, you know, other, like other, other people who have got caught cheating or, you know, banned from there have been, you know, removed from playing not only on GG, but on these live stops. So you aren't banned from Triton Poker Stops? Yeah, I'm not banned not from Triton Poker. I'm thinking of going to, for this weekend. For this weekend? Okay. Because some people were saying that they thought you were banned from playing the Triton events because a lot of those guys got together and said that... I mean, are you sure you weren't, you never been, you, you weren't banned during June for any event? Absolutely not. I was never banned uh, on Triton Poker. You can look into that and ask whoever and find out, you know, for yourself. But at no okay. point was I ever banned from Triton. I actually had plans to go to that Triton that was in Madrid, but decided to extend my trip in Hawaii. So I still get messages from the people who run the tournaments in Triton all the time. Uh, I've never been told anything other than that I'm completely welcome to play any event that they ever run. Interesting. Interesting stuff, Brent. Interesting stuff. Dang, I guess this is how a poker world works, huh? Fuck, it's crazy. Crazy stuff, man. I mean, look through some of these questions. I got a lot of questions from people out there. Kevin Martin said, what does he think? I mean, Kevin Martin, GD Poker represented himself. What does he think about the allegations he facilitated extreme collusion in online satellites? So that was also something that was discussed that in the satellites you would basically try to hit guarantees or you would send in a lot of your horses you would encourage them to play crazy or reckless because they you need to pay the money out for the guarantee anyway so more rebuys are better it makes it look more action maybe get more players in the I'm game sense i'm not running the site so you know more rebuys the better that's you know if i'm just burning money getting rebuys in it's costing me money because i'm staking these guys at no point was there any extreme collusion that was talked about or any type of collusion mm -hmm. that I ever asked anyone to ever do or be a part of. You know, every single person who was staked by me, you know, some people started $100 satellites, some people started 250 satellites, 2.5K satellites. If they were online, some of them started 5K tournaments. To get these tournaments going, you needed players to start the game. So I lost a lot of money staking people in these spots, yeah, like put, I, I'm not put, saying it's I'm not saying it's a smart idea, right? No one, no one necessarily saying this was a smart idea. That's the no thing one's I saying mean, that you're winning, winning, winning with the idea either, right? There could be other. There's other ways to think about it. You're thinking about it from a direct P and L line. Like there's way different ways why it could be advantageous. It's like why does Kerry Katz operate Poker Go? Poker Go. Everyone's like, oh, Poker wasn't making any money. What's what's he doing? Why is he just doing this? Well, he could have another strategy for what he's doing that people don't see on the surface that he thinks is going to lead him to have a successful business or he's doing it for fun or whatever. Common thing I hear in poker. When this situation, to me, it's the same kind of concept where on the surface, maybe, but but at the same time, there's a lot of, lot of reason to maybe do that. So what, what, stra what strategy could that be then that I'm, you know, doing this, especially when I've always taken my, you know, word and reputation, super important. And, you know, it's, it saved me by being able to get loans in points where I, you know, lost all my money that, you know, mm -hmm. that, that was the most, in my mind, it was always the most important thing to, to have strong integrity doing these things. So, you know, while on one side, you know, I'm making all the, I'm making this, all this money, like by being an agent on this site, you know, it makes zero sense to spend my time and energy or, or to be a part of anything that is, you know, cheating, colluding in any way for what you would say is pennies compared to the other one. Yeah, I mean, agree, right? I'm not saying it makes I mean, sense. Um, they don't make, it don't, I don't know why you would. That's what I'm saying. This is why I'm here talking with you. I don't know. They don't, to, to burn, how much money burn, you need? I had to, I had opportunities to burn people for millions before and never, you know, I never, ne never did anything and always took that super important. So now, you know, here's a spot where I'm in my best point ever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense that, you know, the way that I've lived now turns into this. Right. Okay. So some other questions, Josh R.A. said as someone who has at minimum bet the, bent the ethics and done numerous shady things, why would why should we trust that he has decided to raise his morals and not have a Russ Hamilton Godwin capability? So I believe your answer earlier was that you're not in charge of security. Come on, obviously we know when you're the founder of the company, when you're one of the main guys, you can figure, if, they, if you don't like what the guy security is telling you, you get a new security guy. 
you fire that person. We saw that with the media strategy, right? The doctor don't say what we want him to say. We fire the doctor and bring a new doctor in. The doctor's going to say what we want him to say. And if, and, if that, and if that's the environment that you're creating, then you're not going to keep good people for long because people, especially yeah. guys who have had a whole career in poker stars and never decided to leave for anywhere else, you know, that I would say that's what brought, what brought them over was to build a site in the right way to be focused on building the game in the right way. And if I were someone that was trying to micromanage everyone's jobs and allowing them to create the proper framework to do what it is I set out to do, then you wouldn't have, a, you wouldn't have an environment with the, some of the people who are the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like a lot of people think that most of the best in the industry are just all cheaters. Like a lot of these guys are, I mean, really, right? A lot of, you know, what's really happening out there? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think a lot of the top players, the high stakes, the high stakes guys, the guys that play the high stakes tournaments that are perceived to be good players that are perceived to have money that are right. Do you think that, do you think that all these, there's not much cheating happening from your, from, from, it sounds like what you're saying. You, you ain't seen nothing, heard nothing. You don't know anything. Well, no. The how do I know? How do I know this then? And you don't, that doesn't make sense. How would I have heard about this to the point where you would be like, oh, I never heard of it. Like you are literally in this world every day. You're doing business in this world every day. I heard about it. I'm not even in that world. I talked to a lot of people, saying, but what are you saying that I never heard of? And first off, I was I was referring to the best in the industry people that were on the business side of the company, like people who worked worked in the industry and at poker stars, not people who were players in the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, what are, what are you referencing to that you know that you heard about that I'm saying that I didn't hear about? Well, I guess like this guy, right? This guy's saying that there's you know bent of rules done numerous shady things i hear a lot about a lot of people doing these things in games and these satellites when they're people that they're staking i know a lot of situations where it seems like the guy is staking the, the four players in the game five players in the game really all the money is going back to a few people in some situations and it's so easy it's really easy to that so many areas of the poker world there's the private game world there's the public game world there's the high stakes games there's the low stakes games there's the private well, casino private online. There's so many places to play these games. There's so many places to facilitate operations. In some situations, you know, maybe it isn't happening at the Aria poker room in the big game, but it just seems as if a lot of players may be taking place in these other schemes outside of the main attraction event draw areas because it is so easy. And I'm sure, I'm sure that's happening massively in like, you know, these private games, but that's the thing. I've never ran a private game before. I've never been a part of any shady app. Well, so I'm not like asking. I, I'm saying, what do you think? I'm saying, do you think that's a big problem with a lot of the biggest players in our game? The players that we see at the top of these money lists, the players that we perceive to be the best players. I think that I, I don't think that with those people that there are, I think that in those in the private game world, that there are a lot of shady things that happen. But, you know, I, I believe, you know, that Poker Stars did a good job for a long time, like in their game integrity area. I played on Poker Stars pretty much my whole career. Like GG Poker, I, I believe that they were doing, that they had a strong security team and that they were taking game security seriously. So people came and played on GG Poker, but especially with how big I've grown GG, I've had loads of people say, you know, Hey, you know, bring players to this private game or that game or this or that mm -hmm. areas where I know that there's no security at all. And I've never brought a single player to any of those, but a site like GG, who, you know, said they have this big team. When I met them, I went into their office, said that they take their game integrity very serious. So, you know, that was the site that I supported for, for those reasons. So I was, it wasn't, you know, this back alley sign up people to a random you know, private game, random skin that there's zero security on at all. It was, you know, me believing that this was a site that took security serious and trying to grow. You thought site. GG Poker took security serious? What? You thought GG Poker took security serious. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Wow. Really? I never, I never got that impression. I mean, I went there when I went there. They got know, no rake in the game. I don't know. I To me, a guy got no rake in the game. But also from the things I've seen and heard and how I when I start to understand how gaming company works as well, like, I don't know. I mean, I find I find I don't know. You think they take it real serious? Like if they if they if they, if they they're going to the like, guys came back with 50 accounts, right? I don't know. I, I guess I find it hard to to believe that they're taking that seriously, right?
Well, I didn't have, I've never, like I said, I never had visibility into like the background security of what they had. So all that I could take from is, you know, if the people up at the top of the company are telling me, you know, we take this serious. I mean, I guess, I don't know, bro. Like obviously now they, they got licensed through Malta. They want to take it more seriously because now they got market share. They already got their product out there. They got the relationships built up. They got the track record built up. They're in a good spot. They're doing a lot of really great for poker community. So I think a lot of people applaud GG Poker with the work and what they provided, the spark to the industry. Poker stars came in, Bezoff came in, sold it. They fucking chopped it down, rebranded it. They sold it a bunch of times. They got the ambassadors out there right now. Still doing good work. Shout out to Poker Star. Still doing good work now. Quality work now. Um, but GG Poker, right? They came in and now they've been fucking crushing it. To me, these guys are doing a really good job. And they are building partnerships with WSOP. WSOP, they, they're they selling their brand high spitter, right? Who wants to pay me? You come take it over. They come take over World Series of Poker. And uh, I mean, hey, right? They, they're I think they're doing a pretty good job. You know, they're good things a lot be better, of course. But I think they're doing a pretty good job and what they're providing the poker community, the options they're providing, the prize pools they're providing. So I don't want to say that GG Poker is not doing a lot of great work. I think that we need to hold in this situation GG Poker to a high standard as well to figure out because these are the main operators of the game in this situation. So, you know, I think a lot of people out there would like transparency because they might not be in the USA now, but they're coming to the USA soon. And they have all of these faces attached to it. So right now they are taking that stand with the Poker Integrity Council and they're coming out and saying, here are these guys, you know, I mean, have you seen the Poker Integrity Council? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. I haven't seen like, if they've done any, have they done something recently? They're doing, I don't know. They're doing, they did a talk. They sat around the poker table at World Series Poker and talked. Yeah, talked about I, mean, it. I heard about that. And, you know, I know that that's like the council to review, like people who are suspected cheaters, what people sent in should be. And, you know, like you've got a, Jason Kuhn, who, you know, is the head of that council, you know, I was taking him for multiple years. He traveled around, he, he stayed with me in different places, traveled around with me. He said, you know, on podcasts before that he's never, that he hasn't seen me do, you know, any of these things that I'm accused of. And, you know, it wasn't his experience from me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there are not only there are him, there's lots of people that I did you know, clean business and would say that I never asked them to do anything incorrect. So what we've got is- well, What you know, happens when they do? I mean, when they do, it's, it sounds easy just to say, oh, that's isolated incidents, right? I mean, one guy, two guy, three guy, whatever, they're fucking lying. You know, it's really easy to say, oh, that, you know, you can't find anybody else. We found one, not that one. We found one more. No, not that one either. We found that one. No, not that one either, right? Like, it's real easy to, to kind of come out and say that too. So, you know, I'm not saying I had a bad, good strategy or not. I'm just saying that that's the reality of it. So, and a lot of people also want to know, I'm going to keep a few questions rolling here because I want to, I want to go about two hours. So a lot of people asked me this question. I thought they were joking, but they're not. What do you have against Taco Bell? No, it's, you know, it just goes on the line of, you know, people. What's wrong with Taco Bell, bro? Be honest with the people. If, if, a, if a person's, you know, getting Taco Bell at 3 a.m. in the morning every night or every night and, you know, what is it? It's just, you know, I've recommended, I recommend people, you know, things to do or not to do. And have I made fun of people for <laughs> eating Taco Bell like too much and not taking their health like 1% serious? Sure. Did but, you have an, did you have a watcher on Martin Zamani for his, for his Taco Bell habits? Cause you thought it was getting out of line. Of course not. Okay. Cause he said, you got to watch, you got a secret guy. Like, oh yeah, Taco Bell, barely, put him, bump him to the, bump him to the twenties, Bill. Like it sounded like you're going to I barely spent any time with Martin is the thing. You know, I can remember one time he picked me up from like the house that I was staying at in Vegas. And I forget where it was that we went, uh, other than that one and letting him fly like, uh, on a plane from Vegas to Bahamas when I was taking him, I really had no personal interactions with him. I was sending him money and we were talking online. And then Martin also talks about recently, he said that, I mean, I got to go over these messages, right? I don't really want to read them on here, Martin. So I, I can't, there's a bunch of messages on here. So uh, why would, I mean, he basically said that you didn't, you didn't give him rake for a hundred plus players that he signed up, but you're basically saying he owed you money. So he shouldn't have paid you anyway. Well, he got his agency closed by GG Poker. So it wasn't me who closed his agency. So it's it GG wasn't... Poker to work out with them guys. They they closed his agency because he would he was he had multiple people that he signed up 
who wrote these like letters against him to Gigi's support mm -hmm. and he got a warning before from them and then got closed down from them so it was, I, I didn't steal or take any dollar that was owed to him he was in a he had a deal where this he was guy martin zamani just full of shit, didn't he it sounds like i mean he's just he's just making things up constantly huh i mean for this sure guy doesn't know what the shit. fuck he's he talking about huh? is that what you're saying that's what you're saying for the guy i mean oh my god he said you know, she said big poppy in the middle of it i talked with martin martin's like why you say i'm not trustworthy why you why are you questioning my like i don't know i question everything i hear at first nowadays i don't know what what people's agendas are i I've, I've just been doing this stuff too long that I'm not naive when I first started in my bedroom, the old GTO Midwest headquarters, and now I'm in GTO Las Vegas headquarters. Now I just have a lot more insight into what's happening out there, what's Fugazi, who's not a Fugazi, how this stuff works. And what I realize is most people are full of shit. So when I take things, when people say things, maybe it's, I used to have a very positive attitude. Now I have more of an op op pessimistic attitude about certain things people say. And what I've learned in the poker is that nothing is what it seems and that people aren't really, they don't have any incentive to tell you anything about anything. So it's really hard in this situation to decipher, well, maybe not, maybe not some people, but it's challenging for me to decipher what's true between you and Martin Zamani. Martin Zamani, this guy seemed very passionate about his beliefs and you two were actually spotted next to each other at a poker table in Florida. And people wanted to know when you two were spotted next to each other, what happened and what was said and what went down there. Um, you know, in that, in that instance, you know, he sat right next to me. It was the first time I saw him, like from that, you know, I, I confronted him for, you know, knowing that he lied about, you know, all of these things that are on here. I took like a bit more of maybe an aggressive line than I would like to. I could have been, you know, a stronger person and just, you know, dealt with it. But for me, you know, I had, I had my, you know, name drawn through the mud from something that, from a lot of lies that he knew were lies. And when I saw him for the first time, I had to call him out for being a liar. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Let me go some more questions on here. Uh, yeah. How important do you think it is for a poker player to have a good name and be considered upstanding in the community? I think it's the most important thing because like I said, you know, throughout my career, if I didn't have, you know, a good reputation, uh, I wouldn't have been able to borrow, get stakes from people when I lost all my money, when, you know, was able to be in scenarios where most people, when they lose all their money, they're out of the game. Mm -hmm. So the only way, like, you know, you'll survive the game, I would say, is by having that, like, good, good, reputable reputation, unless if you just, you know, sun run and just consistently win forever. i don't think i actually disagree i think that you don't need a good reputation in poker because if you just know the right people then you can always get money and if you know how to win and make money then you're always a value to somebody out there because most people want to make money so i actually used to think that this mattered and now i don't think it matters much like well, obviously you it you'd want to have a good reputation ideally but i actually don't think it 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 ultimately matters if your goal is to make money i think you can still do that well, you've got to have a good reputation with these people, otherwise they wouldn't be backing you. So no matter what, you have they have to feel good about you and getting right. into business, even if you're going to operate in that way. So if you know they if they don't, if people have a huge negative feel appearance about you, you're in the community is very negative. It's going to be much much harder to actually just to be in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it would seem that way. Uh, Martin's in the chat. He said he wants to get called in. I'm like, listen, I don't know if I'm ready for all this, bro. I don't know if I'm ready for all this. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I added Martin to the chat. I mean, I would love to host a, a forum of you and Martin, but and and you know, I'd have to be in very control of the conversation, right? Because I don't, I don't want to be in something. This guy yelling at you or yelling at you. But are you open to anything? You what? I don't see any point. Okay, you don't see any point to talking with him. No, because the guy's, you know, he's clearly lied about many things. You know, if he actually spread the truth, you know, if he talked about the truth and didn't make up things that he knows are outward lies, like talking about any type of collusion or cheating that he knows are outward lies, I'd be very open to have that conversation. But with someone who has no integrity just to continue lying, I don't see really the, the value in having any conversation. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that on one end. I mean, I probably wouldn't want to uh yeah i mean i probably wouldn't want to if i were in your situation either so bring the chats fired up they're excited listen smash the 
dude, these people are crazy out here. Brent, what have you done to these people? Doug Polk really got them fired up with the with the suit code and the, the notebook. You know, the world's done it to them. You know, the world's been crazy recently. And, Smash the know. like button if we should call in Martin. What do you guys think? Brent, Brent, I know Brent wants to call in Martin. Brent, listen, I know you want to call. I know you. Think about the... Think about the historic moment that'd be for the community. You and you and Martin mean. I mean, they're going to tell this in the documentary when they document the career of Bryn Kenny from high stakes to whatever the hell is going on here with your life to the next chapter of your life. They're going to have these moments in, and uh, I always like to think about life like that. They look back in the documentary and they see people in the chat. They want them call. We're not going to call them, guys. Maybe we set some up for next time, but. I, I think that's not right to do that to anybody. I mean, force someone to talk to someone. I just don't think that's the right thing to do. Even though a lot of the chat's fired up, they want that. So listen, chat, if you guys got some questions, topics you want to you want to say to me, <laughs> please let me know. And uh, I appreciate it. This is my first podcast back in a while. I Once again, I want to thank Bryn for coming on here, for having the conversation. I already got a bunch of texts from people in the community. You know, some people making accusations saying some of the stuff isn't true. This isn't true. That it's not true. You know, where do we go from here? It's up for everyone out there to watching to decide to make their own viewpoint, make their own opinion on the situation. So I guess from here, do you, you know, it's kind of a rough spot because you really can't prove a lot of things that you're saying. And the other side, if they saying these things happen, I mean, in some ways it's on them to step up and prove that. And then I, as I said earlier, GG Poker is the one who really has all the access to this information. Yeah, and I, you know, like I said, I think it's, uh, it's telling right there that I've never had my account banned and never been you know, talked about for any type of cheating that went on with me or anyone that I was investing in. Continue to have a strong relationship with them from when I started. So, you know, in my opinion, that's very telling that, you know, these wrongdoings weren't going on on the site that I was, that is being alleged that they are. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I guess you gotta, everyone out there gotta re, uh, re kind of go over this information. I'm gonna watch the information back a few times, kind of go over some stuff in the past as well. and. I feel like I covered a lot of topics, questions people had, and the dad thing. So people said shout out to the Father's Day. So what's happening with you and Father's Day and the, the all the good dads out there and your training material? Is that coming out? Soon? Uh, I mean, no, no, that was just you know a stupid a stupid post. I, I have a few stupid ones that I wrote, you know, just to go after people who were you know not even going after. Yeah, just to make that stupid comment about people making poor content and. You know, trying to pit myself to compete against them, I would say that that's like a, a childish and, you know, just, I guess I was, you know, st stupid in that time. And, hmm. you know, that's why a lot of people make fun of it. And, you know, it's on, yeah, I think all, all we can do is learn from like uh, these things in reality. You know, I'm, I want to support everyone who's trying to grow the game of poker, you know, with content, with, whatever it is that they're doing and that perspective that i gave off wasn't you know really who i am and was just you know poor poor taste in judgment to come out that day and choose like war for no reason hmm. so you're saying in the future even if you made mistakes in the past and even if you've done some things that you're not happy about you intend your intention is to is to what not engage in these activities again if to whatever degree that you may or may not have engaged in them. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? And then in the future, yep. if that takes place, right? I mean, we got to come back to you and we got to say, hey, you know, you said, you know, it, it, but it seems like if more texts come out, if more things come out, if more information comes out, then, you know, if this pr disproves what you've been telling me on here, then we really can't believe anything you're saying, right? You know, that's sort of the risk. And what you're doing here is like, if that contract information comes out, then yeah, you know, and, and some stuff already has come out, right? We have seen the text messages. We have seen the talks of ghosting. We've seen the talks of you facilitating people maybe having access to multiple accounts and circumventing those situations. And and we have accusations from the players that were made in the games or a part of the games right now. So, you know, I don't know what's going to come from this, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. You have any have any other topics you want to I guess we, I guess, you know, we get, get into the poker. So I, I do want to talk about that a little bit here just with you for the four poker sites so four poker obviously is a poker site that you are working on and you think that you are going to make a serious debt in the market or are you going to be doing the same thing gg poker is doing where you're letting like you may have mentioned that earlier right you there are regulations i mean the regulations and this is what happens but you know i guess what's the next step with that for you um well yeah like you said before that too like yeah my intention for sure is to try to take every situation and every experience as a learning experience and try to grow and to, you know, maybe not do things that you've done in the past or, you know, try to be always 
better, stronger person. Like with with what I see, GG is my intention is to do things in the right way to offer something to offer a site to the community that takes uh, security, loyalty, support, and the game and the community very serious and always open to to feedback and to pivoting what we do. So, you know, my goal is to, yeah, to offer people a place that they feel safe to play on and try to grow the game, uh, what it turns into. If it's a competitor for, you know, the top poker site in the world, then, you know, maybe if it, can, if it helps the community in whatever way and has a positive impact on the people that are involved in it, from the employees to the customers, to everything that you touch, then I see that as the real success. So I try to just, you know, grow, learn, try to do things better every day and try to take it, you know, one day at a time and be a better person every day. Yeah, one thing Lauren mentioned in some of the text message she posted was that you were promising a 100x return on investment and the poker site, you're trying to raise money for the poker site and a couple other people, I, I saw one other guy mentioned that you were, for raising rounds, you were promising 100x return to people and you're not allowing people to take back their investments. So after these situations happen, so I mean, if you'd like to get into that or talk more about that with Lauren, cause she did post that and made reference to that and a bunch of people were talking about that as well. Well, that was my opinion. It wasn't a guarantee that, you know, it's you know, my opinion was, you know, and I, I saw myself at a point there where she owed me a lot of money. I thought that, you know, if she made a small payment towards our debt and made a small investment in the company, then that could be beneficial for her. And that could be the outlet for her to, to pay me the money back that she still owed me. Mm. But like, do I think that it's going to be super successful? Absolutely. Like, would I ever try to bring anyone, you know, down something that I don't believe in? Absolutely not. Like I've put all my money into this. I've put all my effort, energy over the past few years to be able to offer the community something that if I was coming into the game from the beginning, it's the place that I would want to play. Interesting. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with the message. I don't disagree with the idea. If you can pull the idea off, if you can, if the idea is a legitimate idea. If the idea is what it, what the idea tends to be. And obviously that's where you have to now back it up with your actions. And you know, you got to follow through on what you're saying. You're making a lot of promises. You're saying a lot of these things aren't true. You're saying a lot of things didn't happen. And, and I guess the one thing I worry about is that then this is, if this is, if the other side's true, then it's replicated on this poker side. And then people are going to go there, facilitate that action. And, you know, that, that's the sort of things I look out for. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know, man. So I guess we're gonna have to wait and see really what happens. You know, I'm gonna digest this. I'm gonna talk with Martin as well, kind of get his feedback on some of the things that you said. I don't think the investigation's over by any means for a lot of people out there. It seems like a lot of people are still interested in this situation. So, you know, I've given you a chance to kind of speak your piece, answer the tough questions that I think a lot of people had to answer. I wasn't paid to do this. You didn't pay me to have you on. The only people that are sponsoring the show are great companies like Manscaped that we're shaving our bush with. Listen, man, this, uh, we, lo we love Manscaped. Shout out to Manscaped. They, they, they're supporting me. Chip Lear Coach is supporting me. Gorilla Gaming is supporting me so that I don't need to sell my soul t technically yet to the corporation to that degree. So no, Bryn Kenny, did you not pay me to come on here? This isn't promotion for your poker site. This was something where you agreed to answer anything I fucking had. You didn't say, hey, ask this. You didn't say, ask that. So we, uh, you know, we do thank you for that. That's obviously up to everybody in the chat. You guys can let me know what you think. Let me know what you decide. And uh, and yeah, you want to you give any last parting words at all, Bryn? Mm. Nah, I think I said enough words today. Said enough. All right. Yeah. I mean, listen, we appreciate you coming on. Shout out to once again, design for that giveaway chip leader coaching for giving away the closer package below the, the coaching with chance, the chip leader AI. And uh, that's below. It's free to do. And also I'm choosing two people to play heads up. Comment below. Tell me why I should choose you to play heads up. You guys are going to compete. Uh, who knows who, I don't know who's going to be doing co-commentary with me, but I'm going to be uh, making some out of that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited for that. Shout out to uh, chip leader coaching. Gorilla Gaming, Manscaped, shout out to Bryn Kenny for coming on here. And listen, guys, something tells me this isn't over yet. So stay tuned. We'll see more. 
We're going to head over to Saul for Y to get their reaction for the show. Very interested to see what the crew's got to say. Big shout out to everybody over there doing a hard work, doing a good job. And uh, I'm going to redirect my channel over to those guys. I want to help them out. I think we're doing a good show, good product. They've been working hard. So, Bryn, once again, thanks for coming on, man.